Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drinking Beer and Play Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour Podcast. Yes, hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 244. Thank you for joining us tonight. Brian, speaking of joining, we have a tradition going on this podcast. We have a guest. Mm -hmm. He is the first guest of the year that we have had for like four years running. I think five. Is it five now? Mm -hmm. Holy God. But yes. To help us bring in the new year, it is our good buddy Dan. You know him as Blade Blur. Blade, how you doing, man? A uh, B, Jim. You gave Sonic three and Knuckles a B. No, I'm not gonna do the whole stick again. <laughs> hey, what, what did I give Sonic Adventure two? Huh? What did I give Sonic Adventure two? Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. What sir. did I correctly give your garbage franchise? How about that? Ooh. Blade, how disappointed are you that Jim, who was the Sonic and Sega fanboy, has turned so hard on that franchise? I don't care. He's a persona non grata to me. I mean, it's like, <laughs> you give Shadow a freaking D over Sonic Adventure 2. I mean, better That's game. just wrong. Better. Okay. <laughs> One <laughs> bad that you can get used to as opposed to three bad that you can't. Tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong in multiple ways, but in service of time, I'm gonna go into like you know a Look, scroll list of things. Side with the deviant art weirdos. That's fine. That's that could be your argument. That could be your crowd. That's fine, Blade. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to you know insult your people, so that's really not my place to do it. So. I mean, it does give me some crusty corner content, but besides that. But it, it, yeah, but yeah, it's crazy. This is the fifth time. Which um, are we gonna do something like SNL? Are we gonna get like a five timers jacket or something like that? And oh, we need way more patience before I'm giving out fucking jackets. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a patch that says five on it. I'll take that. You can send a pin. You can get a pin. Like, oh, I want a pin. Oh, we can sharpie a five on it. There you go. Ooh, like a little like beer stein. It has like a little five on it. Ooh. That'd be, that'd Blade, be we're gonna just have to figure out a way to do it in person next time you get to too many games or something. Yeah. So that way we we, we can we can make it right. Do it all. In exactly. Person. The world can experience drunk blade. <laughs> I don't think Blade is right to experience drunk blade, let alone the world. So. It's like a unicorn. Well, it's a, we're gonna unleash it. It's a world premiere. But before we get into everything, Blade, where can people find you? Uh, currently, I'm pretty much uh, on any social media platform you find me, just Bladeler. So. Instagram, uh, X, Twitter. I don't even know what to call this platform anymore. Just call it Twitter. Um, no one calls it X. Just call it goddamn Twitter. <laughs> Jim, it's X, because X going to get He wishes he was that cool. <laughs> he wish. I mean, I know there's all those like other social media platforms like Blue Sky and what have you, but I still haven't really delved into that. Blue Sky, realm Threads, yet. Hive, True Social, Minds, we're on Mastodon, all of them. Pterodactyl. Yeah, exactly. We get like <laughs> three likes a month between all of them combined. It's great. I, I love yeah. asking Jim. I'm like, what are we on again? Oh, that Bri one. Bri How's we, it do? We, we hung out drugs. Yeah. <laughs> well, besides that, but we hung out the other day for the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the last, we hung out for a family party over the weekend, and Bri was already like. What's this blue sky thing? And I explained it, and he was like, oh, "What is it?" And he's like, "Are we on there?" I was like, "Yeah, we're on there. Don't worry about it." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I would say I, like the main. Uh, oh, sorry. Go on. In the no, 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 no. Go ahead, bud. No, I was just saying. Pretty much, those are the platforms I'm on, and obviously, there's also the YouTube channel, which I hope to post some kind of an update about what I'm planning throughout uh, the year. But I would say the main area, if you want to interact, would be Twitch. I, that's where I've been streaming a lot of the games, especially a bunch of the stuff I've done for um. The 23 and 23, which you'll get to eventually as well. But that's oh, been... we can get to that right now. Oh. So, Blade, oh. how about, oh. so how many games did you wind <laughs> up with? Uh, I finished technically games that I haven't completed in the past at all. It'll be 40. So I did 40 of them. Nice. Ooh. And you recently did a Twitch stream that people can watch the VOD of where you went through all those mm -hmm. games and you did the ranking, right? That is right. It's twitch.tv slash blade blur. <laughs> That's what I Shameless like to hear. plug. That's what oh, I like. Yeah. Get it yeah. out there. And there are links below. Make sure you check them out for Blade. If you're not already following him, he's a much better streamer than us. Shut up. <laughs> you're fun to listen to, especially when you curse during Dead by Daylight or something. Me curse? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, sometimes you say <laughs> offensive things like cabbage face or something. Yeah. What else are you going to say? Are you going to suggest I drink during stream and then play really poorly? How dare you? Don't <laughs> so tell I, people the secret. Yeah. <laughs> so I have uh, Blade's yeah. tier list in front of me. We can hit a couple of these up. Ooh. So, High Seas Havoc in S. Really? 
I haven't played uh, it, so like this is one of those like is this like a true hidden gem kind of game or? <laughs> uh, Heist's Havoc is a very interesting story because that's a game I played in my childhood, um, back um, in Israel when I had a Mega Drive, and I remember each um, week me and my mom went to this like uh, video game store uh, that was kind of like Blockbuster, and we were like renting games there and. Uh, High Seas Havoc was one of those games, but later on I forgot what that game was, and I told my friend, who was also happened to be from Israel as well, he, I was telling him, hey, what is that game when you're like this Sonic-like creature, and you're like a pirate, and he was like, oh, it's High Seas Havoc, I was like, wait, that's the name of this thing? And like, literally ten years later, after my childhood, I find out the name of that game, and I got to like, you know, uh, play it again, and I planned to do a review for it like a decade ago, but life... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, and last year, a lot of the things I've done for the level, um, uh, not level 50, sorry, the 23 and 23, was play games that came out, like, either 20 years ago or 30 years ago. So then, like, 2003 or 1993. High Seas Havoc happened to be in 1993, and I thought to myself, um, this game is very hard, it's very frustrating, but... It's one of those games that once you beat it and you take on those challenges in the game, you feel incredibly satisfied because uh, there's just so many great um, levels you get to tackle. The bosses are incredibly challenging. Like, the final boss is literally a shmup boss in a sense. Like, he showers you with, like, meteors and you have to avoid them, but it's a platformer. It's not, you know, a shmup where you have, like, the freedom of moving everywhere on the screen. So you actually have to be very particular with your jumps and avoid his, like, um, uh, sword that shoots lightning and stuff like that. And I remember doing it on stream and dying over and over and over. But when I finally got to him, I was like, oh, that <laughs> relief. <laughs> and that that sense like, of relief and accomplishment just shot it yeah. right at the charts for you. Well, the thing is that back then I was, like, thinking to myself, I was really frustrated with the game because there are some moments that it can be kind of cheap. But looking back on it now, I'm like, A, I have nostalgia for this game because it kind of reminds me of home. And the other is, um, it actually is a very good platformer. It's one of the most creative platformers on the system. It has its own style. I do humbly think it has one of the best soundtracks on the Sega Genesis by far. And I don't say that lightly. It looks great. Actually, speaking of soundtracks, you know that stupid thing that I used to do? The bad joke dance meme? Oh, it's how I fell in love with your channel, of course. Yeah, well, <laughs> among other reasons, um, if you go to High Seas Havoc to the sound test, the orchestra mode, that's where that's from. So. Oh, no shit. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> that's where I took that from. So, yeah. I mean, you know, honestly, it could have been a high A instead of an S, but I'm letting bias here take reins. And I'll, I own up to my bias. I'm not going to pretend like you know that I'm like, you know, oh, yeah. holier than thou when it comes to some of my... Picks, so oh, yeah, now I'm the same way. I actually did also love before we get into the games you thrashed. Yeah, I also did love seeing that uh, Prince of Persia of Sands of Time held up because, like, that was one of my favorite games ever when it first came out, and I haven't touched it in 20 years. So, like, I was curious same. to see if it held up <laughs> at all. It did. I, I streamed it too. I actually tried to uh, work. Um, I I'll talk on the YouTube stuff very quickly. I'm not going to take the whole time, but I've done a few videos last year, calls of games of decades past, which is kind of like a revival of what I did. 10 years ago, talking about games that came out in 2003, and one of the plans I had to do um, in November is to talk about Prince of Persia Sense of Time and see how well that game aged, so I thought to myself, maybe I'll stream it and see if the game is as good as it was in 2003. Besides the combat, that can be kind of generic, because it's just enemies that keep on spawning, and you keep doing the same combos over and over again, it doesn't really change. Other than that, it's peak, like, 6-gen gaming right there um the fact that not just the prince is a character but the entire like castle like the palace with all of its contraption and traps that's a character on its own like what can you grab on like what kind of um um platforms you can jump from uh it, it's incredibly creative and i think what's really good about what i like it especially for uh, beginners more so than like you know pro gamers like us for <laughs> say <laughs> Yeah, is uh, don't you can... add Jim in that list. Don't hey. do that. Um, I he mean, can't he... even beat Tetris ninety nine. Until you do that, <laughs> not a thirteen year old. Maybe in ninety nine <laughs> years. Oh. Wait, Blade. Oh. Would you say he's got ninety nine problems, but Tetris ain't one? <laughs> I'm hanging this shit up. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it's a fantastic game, is what I'm trying to say overall. Um, 
And I really hope that uh, somewhere in Ubisoft Montreal, hopefully that remake is still coming up because, man, I would really like to see some of the kinks ironed out to really, like, polish it. Kind of like what they did with Resident Evil last year, I would say. Yeah. Mm. And I'm not going to get into too many of the games, but we, w one thing we like about these little gimmicks we do every year is it tends to be a learning experience. Like, me learning, yeah. I hate anything Sonic after the Sega Genesis. Where it seems like, Blade, you learned that you don't quite like Ninja Turtles games. Shredder's Revenge was pretty awesome. I think we talked about it last year, too. We even had discussion that it was better than Streets of Rage 4, which it is, by the way. I want to point that out. Remember, yeah, exactly. the Sonic fan thinks it's better than Streets of Rage 4. Do with that as you will. <laughs> Jim, most people, most people with common sense know well, most it's, people it, with it, brain it's cells. definitively better. It's just one of those. You just yeah, like Street Rage now more, that That's all. Finished it. Yeah. All right, because it's better. All right, moving on. But yes, <laughs> wait. No, so but the other ones, like I was thinking to myself, maybe I should try the Kawabanga collection to see what was all the hubbub around, like you know, the other Turtles games that I never grew up with. And that was a mistake because I realized half of them are just not very good at all. And my, I think my, um, the worst memory I can think of from playing games last year is from Turtles NES, pressing start to begin, and you know, you're on the over, uh, on the overworld map, and just do, 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 you just walk two steps, and there's this car running you over, and you're dead. Yep. And I'm like, well, this is a sign of things to come right there. <laughs> Yeah, this, that, I think that's uh, everyone's experience with it. That was definitely mine, and I didn't put that much time into it. So I was I, like, I finished it. That's the reason why I put it in the tier list because I wanted to at least to be fair when I said this game sucks ass. I can at least you know say, well, at least I finished it. Yes, I rewound. I rewound a lot of times because I think you have to be like pixel perfect in your positioning to avoid projectiles, and I don't have the patience or the lifetime to learn this broken game. Um, let's put it this way. I also played Sonic Genesis on the GBA again <laughs> last year, and I would rather play that over Turtles NES is how much I despise that game. Wow. Strong mm. words. Yeah, nice. Very strong. And I hate that Sonic GBA port, I want to point out. That was uh, a travesty. Like, I didn't have, like, an F tier uh, the year before because I didn't really play, like, that many, quote-unquote, bad games, but 2023 was a different story. <laughs> It's all right. Hey, we all got surprised. I, um, this year, Blade, I know you did level 50 with us. Did you find it a little more difficult this year? I mean, I know you went above 23, obviously, by a large margin. But <laughs> did you feel like it was a little bit more of a struggle than a level 50 like we did? Um, I like the idea of the 50 because, like, 50 is, like, a round number. So it feels like mm -hmm. when you reach that goal, it's like, you know... 50 a new number ha sort of thing yeah. but i like the idea of the 23 and 23 because it really forces me to not go to my comfort zone and be like well i guess i'm gonna play every sonic game again for like the upteen time you know yeah. so i think both uh formats have their own merit and technically if i was to do like the level 50 last year I technically also achieved it because i did finish like 10 games that i have completed before so you can say i did the level 50 twice which is nice in a way yeah. Um, but yeah, but the whole idea is that, like, 40 games I never played before, most of them were new stuff, um, you know, like, some modern stuff, some of the Turtle stuff. I tried not to go to, like, easy, like, ways out, like, not like games I can finish in, like, 30 minutes, because I wanted to challenge Wait, myself. Wait, you mean, like, you mean, like, Jim's games? Bar <laughs> Kirby Loaded <laughs> Extreme yeah, Lindsay Loaded Snoopy's Edition or Adventures and shit. <laughs> that was 150 <laughs> levels, I'll have you know. I don't want to hear. Anything one with more than 100 levels should only be kid Spike comedians. will chase you and kill you a lot. Is it still better than Sonic Adventure 2? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned it, it's Bull much crap. better. Yeah. <laughs> Now, there is actually one thing I wanted to say, and that's regarding Horizon, because I was watching your level uh, 23 um, video from the end of the last year, and I was actually looking back on that series, and I'm like, I like it, but I don't love it sort of thing. Like, it's well made, it's well crafted, but there's this je ne sais quoi, this like, element that mm -hmm. I don't connect with. Maybe it's the storytelling, it feels like very, like, by the books, and there's no, like, you know, something crazy about it. I don't know, but... I, I kind of tend to, like, slowly agree with what you were saying, Brian. Like, I get why maybe there's, like, lack of connection there with that franchise. I still like yeah. it, but yeah, I lowered yeah, it I, from what you, I thought. 
you and I talked about that. And I remember at first you were a very staunch defender. When I was in the thick of it, I remember feeling like this. And then when I finished it, like, yeah, it's something you you walk away from it. You can't say it's a poorly made game. You can't mm-hmm. say the mechanics are bad. Like, there's nothing you can point to other than it's just like, yeah, the characters, the story. There was something there that felt yeah. so meh. And, and you still so, give it an like, A, too. So. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> I, I recognize... It's a weird thing. I'm defending giving something a good score, but it's like I know some people love the shit out of that game. Mm-hmm. I just those characters and that world was not enough for me to be like I can't wait to play the next one. So it is yeah. what it is. And, and, yeah, and you know what? Sometimes you know that's the thing with like time, and people have to realize that when we make tier lists, when we rank stuff, we're human, and opinions may change after a while. So. Mm-hmm. That's just how it is, and I'm actually looking at my list, too. And even, like, what I did back then, yeah, there's a bunch of things I'll still change. I mean, maybe I'll Fuck put, like, yeah. Rocket Knight above Resident Evil Remake, for example, is another exa- is something I was thinking Son of. of so. Don't you dare. I, th- I thought you didn't like the remake. I love the remakes. The remakes are all great. <laughs> there's not one remake I don't dislike. <laughs> Three! <laughs> you son of a bitch. Well, Blade, let me ask you this. Okay. I know, as tradition, you still have yet to actually participate in the drinking. Are you still just hydrating this episode, or are you enjoying any adult beverages? <laughs> no, I still have my uh, baby uh, be- um, Son <laughs> of a bitch. <laughs> one Tra- of these days. Tradition well, unlike none other. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I have to make sure that people's bingo card can still have that one extra, like, you know, mark there, like, br- Blade Bringing Water or Jim's Crusty Quarter. They have to have a bingo, whether it's a diagonal or a vertical. I need to help them win. <laughs> Next time we see you in person, we're getting you drunk and just recording yeah. it just so we can have that. But you know what? Let me actually do something since this is, like, my fifth time. I want to ask you, what are you drinking tonight? Ooh, Ooh. Chambers, I'll let you start. All right, I am drinking from the Boonshine Brewing Company that comes out of Boone, North Carolina. Their it's space like moonshine. What's that? It's like moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> it is their Space Pegasus New England style IPA. So they got a lot of the little flavorings on there that you can expect to be in here. A lot of citrus, as is normal with the New Englands. <laughs> me 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 me. me. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> Saddle get the up. cummies out. What's that? <laughs> I said get the cummies out. Yeah, well, there's only so many of those I can get out. They just I keep mean, swimming. I mean, you're literally drinking <laughs> from like a, like a can with a puking unicorn on it that's puking rainbows. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, what else are they going to puke? <laughs> I'm puking a rainbow. Look, I've, I'm drinking Pegasus puke. I've also had unicorn poop in the past. Like, There's a lot of unicorn and bodily function related beers out there. It's a creative field. the kids, everyone. <laughs> That's right. Saddle up, spread your wings, and prepare for an intergalactic adventure from Boonshine Brewing Company. It's Boonshine's very own space pegasus soaring through the galaxy, saving the world from big beer. This New England-inspired IPA is jam-packed with magical rare hops that are anything but tame. The space pegasus pulls its magical superpowers from an ever-changing juicy hop recipe, so giddy up, Boonshiners, and prepare to take flight. I hate you. You know um, what they say, you can't spell <laughs> saddle without sad. Oh, got him. It's got me there. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is actually a surprisingly <laughs> dark, hazy IP or New England style. Careful. What? Careful. What? Careful. Fry. Fry. Careful. Don't. Fry. This isn't you when we're not recording, all right? I'm just, I'm just saying, Easy. careful. Easy. But yeah, uh, it's very, like, I mean, it lives up to its hazy name. Uh, the, the lacing's pretty decent on the glass itself. And, yeah, it's a citrusy aroma, a lot of citrus flavors in there. Kind of tough to pinpoint one from another because they all just kind of mesh together. But, yeah, I mean, it is a flavorful and good mouthfeel New England-style IPA. So if you like them, you'll enjoy this one. Okay. So I went with my Brewdog Hazy Jane Pineapple. It is also a New England IPA. Doesn't have a goddamn goofy-ass unicorn puking... uh, you know rainbows it's just you know this sounds more like man shit. beer it's more man beer it's 7.2 percent. it's simple it doesn't need a paragraph to sell it because you know why it was goddamn delicious i finished it basically as soon as we started because it went down so smooth with the pineapple it was that perfect mix of the citrus of just a little bit of hops 
Uh, I can't recommend this one enough. Of the BrewDog beers I've gone through, it's one of the best I've had. And then I followed that right up with the BrewDog Cannon Blast. Got a, a very just... I, I just... I, I, I love that little... The little star with the the little flag on it. Starcast is going to jerk off to this yeah. episode. That's the uh, Washington <laughs> Capitals logo, basically. So, yeah. Shout and this is a Pilsner, 5%. <laughs> it's a dry hop Pilsner. I don't know mm. what that means. I just know, once again, just like the other one, it goes down smooth because I'm almost done this one as well. Bry is going to be so, spicy tonight. So, yeah, I will be... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, then, to finalize my brew dogs tonight unless i grab another one is the pina playa which is a pina colada ghost so (laughs) chambers this is up your alley as a sour it'll be 5.2 percent um i've had love hate relationships with anything pina colada in a beer because it's weird because you get like coconut and some of this stuff uh so i'm very curious to see what comes out of this but brew dog uh after i've had their this little um the thing my wife got me for Christmas, the advent calendar or the beers, I'm still Aww. like catching up to all of it. It's it was a really good gift. So I, I would highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, and back to the Pegasus, it's six point three percent. So kind of light for a New England, but eh. Yes, yeah, later in mind. Uh, flavors Once again, as the brew dog more have. man more man, man beer. This is seven point two percent. Yeah, me, 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 me. What was that about? <laughs> oh no i was just wondering like how many flavors did the brew dog have because you had like three do they have like even more so, yeah so this one's the pineapple uh this one is just your basic ass dry hop pilsner <laughs> and like i said this one being the pina colada i i'm just gonna guess before i even open it you're just gonna have a very strong flavor of coconut <laughs> we'll see I'm, how it turns out i'm just imagining a new flavor literally on the label it says dry ass <laughs> Untapped I mean, market. As he's drinking too, <laughs> it's like that little. I mean, one. come on, dry ass. <laughs> Been there, done that. Let's let's not pretend our all of our tongues haven't slipped at one point. All right, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> oh no, it happened. Oh no, it happened again. I'm here. It's gonna <clears throat> happen regardless. I mean, that's kind of my outlet. <laughs> So, Blade, I know we really quickly just covered your 40 list in 23, but since the beginning of this year, what have you been playing recently? What have you been enjoying, and and what are you diving into right now? So, you know how, like, New Year resolutions you have to, like, you know, make up for, like, you know, the mistakes you've made in previous years? Yeah, Jim's um, been being made up for since he was born, so come on. Oh, yeah, okay. I still find <laughs> ways to fuck up. I, I mean, the whole Sonic Adventure 2 is a proof of that, but I digress. And in any case... Oh, yeah, I, I resolved to never touch a fucking 3D Sonic game again, and so far it's going swimmingly. <laughs> I'm going to give you Sonic Boom just for saying that anyways... <laughs> Patreon.com slash drink beer play game. <laughs> Touche. Um, I think my problem is that in 2023, I find myself playing a lot of catch-up with 2022, and the reason why I'm saying this is that 2024 is going to be a catch-up to 2023, because mm. there's just um, a lot of stuff that I've missed out on from the last year, and I'm slowly chipping on my backlog. I think my key game right now I'm going through, I'm pretty close to finishing, is uh, Sea of Stars, actually. Ooh, okay. Which uh, I never really... I, it's funny, because we kind of talked about, like, um, JR... Um, turn-based RPGs last year, like, when I was recommending you, like, what kind of stuff to play, and I was also mentioning, um, uh, Fracture Butthole, and I believe, Brian, you actually played it last year and finished it, right? Yep, yep, Yeah. Was on so, my list. Yeah, so, kind of, like, um, with Sea of Stars, it's essentially, like, what if Chrono Trigger was brought to modern day, essentially, with, like, modern pixelated art and, um... A bunch of, like, better um, gameplay mechanics, like, easier way to move around the map and stuff like that. And it's, um, there's a reason why I won Indie Game of the Year. But it's not my favorite indie game. I mean, that was Neon White from last year. By the way, play it. That game is amazing. But I- I'm enjoying it so far, especially since I haven't really played, like, a proper turn-based I- RPG, like, in years now. I'm finding myself really enjoying it. And um, the other game I'm going through right now is also is a Hi-Fi Rush. Which is another thing I I've haven't actually to got play to that. play. Yeah. And so far, um, all the accolades it's getting, um, without trying to spoil so much, um, well deserves. It's 
It's really, really fun. It kind of feels like you're playing through, like, a Saturday morning cartoon in the best way possible with the dialogue. It's really well delivered. It looks great. It sounds great. I mean, the fact they were able to do, like, a hack and slash rhythm game and make that mechanic functional, you know, having, you know, your attacks come in with the beat. It's like, um, that I think you talked about the game Metal Hellsinger. Does that sound I was just about yes. to say, yeah. have you played that game? I have not, though. It is on the PlayStation Plus Extra Premium. Blah, blah, blah. I don't is know it? what they okay. call this service nowadays, but it's available on that. It's It seems to be kind of like that, but like with like, you know, first person, like Doom aesthetic sort of thing, like hell. Yes. It's exactly, that's what it is. It's a first person Doom rhythm based rhythm game. Doom. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Rhythm Doom, yeah. So, yeah, and I'm looking forward to be. I kind of want to focus on finishing Sea of Thieves. It's kind of hard for me to play multiple games at once because you kind of want to be, like, in the mindset and also your, like, um, uh, your uh, reflexes, your muscle reflex, you can call it. You know, when you play a game, you don't want to lose, you know, where all the controls are and all of that. So I want to finish that, then go to Hi-Fi Rush, and then I have, like, you know, a slew of other games I want to go through, especially with some stuff I surprisingly haven't played, being a big fan of, like, Mortal Kombat. I haven't actually got to, like, Mortal Kombat 1, mm, which I okay. need to get to eventually. I haven't yet either. So. I still got to get to that. Yeah, I, I feel like I need to slap on the wrist, because I've been playing those games for 30 years, and look how well-adjusted I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I probably the Sonic. <laughs> the, the, yeah, you know, I cannot really retort that. Yeah, that, that, that train <laughs> sailed. I, I don't know, trains don't sail, but it happens to have a sail on it. So no, 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 no. That, that works. That works perfectly. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it just went to like a mountain or something. <laughs> but I would say those are like the key things right now, and some stuff I'm also working on the Beat Five. We'll get to that topic later, but those are at least my uh, games I'm playing right now. Your floor. <laughs> Chambers, have you been able to play anything this past week? Yes, I finally sat down and decided to put some time into Bionic Commando. Got to get that Patreon review out there. So, uh, yeah, I've been playing on my little handheld uh, Miu Mini just to get some practice in on it. God knows I needed the practice because that is not an easy girl. Uh, controlling that arm is a pain <sighs> in the dick. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I got I got through it. I just got to get, you know, good enough at it so I can do a... Uh, you know, a full run, record it all, and then we can get that review out of the way. Nice. Yeah. And I'll save... I, I talk to you, but I'll save my opinions for the review. Yep. Having played it a little bit. <clears throat> um, diving into the, the uh, you know, our new challenge, Beat 5, I'm still with Duke Nukem 1. And surprisingly, it's been kind of hard to find... It was released in chapters, and I beat the first episode. Or I'm sorry, it was released in episodes. I beat the first episode. I'm on the second one. Um, I have to keep finding like abandoned where or like all types of weird websites where I can actually play it. Uh, I'm on the second one. I think there's three in total, and each episode is ten levels. So, wow. I, you know what? As a kid, I loved the shit out of it because it was a DOS game, and I was like, whatever. Um, <laughs> It hasn't aged great. The noise is at the point where I'm like going to mute it and just listen to other shit because it's so goddamn jarring. <laughs> but it's amazing that that spawned Duke Nukem 3D, which is what I can't wait to get to. So yeah. as far as gaming, it's kind of just been fucking around with that. Like just wanting to get that done, getting some B footage as I'm playing it so I can talk about it. So I, I'm I'm enjoying the process, getting back into it. <clears throat> but it's been sparing. I'll say that it hasn't been dedicated. And I'm hoping next week I can get some real hours to just. Brian, how's that grain of time going? <laughs> can, can I say that for you, Brian? May I? Can, can I? Mm -hmm. Damn it, Jim! That's right, thank you. Ooh. By the way, five I just, times I've been waiting to do this. Yay! <laughs> by the way, I just Damn dipped it. into that peanut player, and it smells. It, it tastes and smells like a burned coconut. Ooh. I don't know how I feel about it. It's interesting. I enjoy I enjoy cooked, uh, you know, baked coconut, but I don't know in beer form. Hmm. You've never how, had how baked you know coconut because that's not a fucking thing, Jim. <laughs> well, you put it in like a pan and you like, you know, you cook it up. I'm going to call complete horse dick on that. You have never done any of that. I've well, never personally done it, but I've eaten it. I don't believe you. Nope. I've I think, it. It's good. I, Delicious. I, I think you mean something it's delightful else. even. But, um, yeah. Check my poop. You are Prove delightful even. Jim, I told you, Ocarina. You little cutie. Uh, Ocarina, I'll beat it the same time you beat Tetris 99. 
Ooh. Well, I guess prepare to have that cartridge. Have At that point, just give it back. Just car. give it back. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, I told you what's going to happen. If you refuse to beat Tetris 99, I'm going to borrow your Switch and beat it. It's not refuse. It's Nothing is refuse about this. <laughs> Didn't you beat like the, the Game Boy game in like 10 seconds or something? You could beat Tetris 99. I played so much Tetris 99, bullshit. the Game Boy game was nothing. Fucking yeah. One of his bullshit entries. I beat Tetris. Like, what? That's not even a real thing. Yes, it is. There is a rocket ship that you goes to the moon. You played Minecraft Turtles. You don't have any say in that either. <laughs> Boom! And I, and I didn't count it until after my 23 was done. There you go. I know. Oh, you I still know, count it. Yeah, and, uh, Brian, I cannot really come any complaints to you because you don't. You're not the Sonic Adventure 2 hater over here. So. I spent all of January getting all those fucking shadow endings, and I didn't even count it because I counted it the year before like an idiot. Because I'm a stupid asshole. That's why. Oh, no. Those 10. No, you don't get like 10 entries because you beat Shadow 10. No, no, no. Times. I beat it no. once and I counted it in level 50. And then I was like, fuck, I already counted it last year. I can't count it this year. <laughs> even though I went and got the real ending, unfortunately, uh, for me. But Chambers, um, unfortunately for us, I, I did want I did want to point out one thing, Chambers. I will say, last episode we talked about it, and uh, you know we had a we had a rough we had a rough go at it after watching that goddamn Eagles Giants game, and we've uh, continued to have even worse luck with the Eagles. However, one thing you did mention is uh, how you were able to recover after whew, the whole night of hams, I'll say. And, oh, uh, yes. I, I've dived pretty deep into our our little uh, collection of the Magic Mind. And um, I don't know if you're dealing with it right now, but it seems like everyone in, that I know is getting the good winter flu. And I don't know if I'm feeling a little... A little tickle in the throat. I'm feeling a little more groggy day in, day out. I'm not going to claim it's the alcohol because that would be irresponsible of me. I'm just going to say that uh, I have been having it for the past few days. And, you know, as someone who's never tried anything with matcha, and I'll be honest, a lot of the re ingredients I can't even pronounce other than lion's mane mushrooms, some cordyceps mushrooms. Um, you know, I, I, I took it as straight shots. And I took it before I had my morning coffee. And what I found is, yeah, I didn't get that normal, like, 11, 30, 12 o'clock kind of like, uh, Like, you know, that right before lunch feeling where you're The come really, down. The big yeah, come that, down. that dragon ass feeling. Um, this, like, I, I felt really good after having it in the sense that, like, I actually delayed my lunch to almost 2 o'clock each day because I, I like, kind of just kept going with my work. So I'm going to say like, it, it definitely, it definitely hit me in a different way. I don't ne necessarily think the matcha's caffeine was so strong that it, it gave me energy in that sense. But you pointed out the, the kind of mind fog clarity. And I, I felt that that same way, like the droning annoyance of answering emails, going through meeting after meeting didn't bother me as much when I was on it. I'm already out of my first, uh, my, my first supply and I noticed a difference once I wasn't on it. So I will say, I think this is pretty damn effective. And on some of the nights we record it where I drank a little too much. I don't know. It just helped my recovery a lot without giving me, you know, I used to have other things that I would say gave me a little bit more of the jitters or my stomach felt a little queasy. I didn't really hit it with this. And, and I think you said, did you mix it with your coffee or tea previously? Yes, I put it right in there. You yep. put it right. See, see, I, I'm the type. I just want to take the shot immediately. So you can do either one. I don't know how I'd feel about mixing it in my coffee, but uh, taking it as a shot, I was fine with. Now I will say I preferred it personally, refrigerated versus just warm. Um, but then again, I like shit cold. So yeah, I did mine cold each time too. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I actually to follow up on my story from last week. Well, I was talking about how I was blasting through my, like, year-end data entry. I actually am ahead of the game now. I was like, all right, I'm ready for, like, the last, like, month. And they're like, well, we're not even ready to give you that yet. So, hey, for my most boring task that I have to do, like, I kind of kicked its ass. And I don't really have that kind of attention span that much these days with how phone addicted I am and internet poisoned I am and just <laughs> having other stuff I'd rather be doing at work. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say, you know what, even if you need a little jolt of just concentration – 
without having to be like on Adderall, I would say it's a nice little alternative there and it's all natural. Yeah. And, and, you know, once again, we do want to point out, we have the links below. We have them here as we're talking, but make sure, try it out. If you're unsure about it, you know, it's nothing like other energy supplements or drinks that I've had. Uh, Jim knows I don't touch any energy drinks ever since I had way too many back in the day. This shit, it's it's much, much better for me. <laughs> so, Brian, I both got the hard flutters from that crap. Yeah. So if you want, give this a try. And in January, you're going to get a full month free if you use our link below at magicmind.com slash J-A-N-D-B-P-G. And if you use our code D-B-P-G-20, you're going to extra 20% off that order with up to 75% off the total order. Now, remember, this ends at the end of January. So make sure give it a try. Give it one month. If you like it, great. If you don't, you know, don't continue it. But I, I would highly recommend just giving it a try because we both enjoyed it so far. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, yeah, we use all the codes, and you basically get three months' worth for one month. Like, good deal to me. It's worth it for sure. But, Chambers, <laughs> moving right along, I know uh, as we were gearing up to Twitter, I had a few folks hitting me up. They got their Patreon questions in this week. So I'm expecting more than the usual one or two because you wait too long to ask. I do not wait too long. <laughs> I've been very good about posting it directly after an episode ends. I am not to blame anymore for this crap. Yeah, I- I'm hoping for juicy stuff today. So <coughs> come bring bring it. <laughs> and, and Blade, we can both agree. Jim's always to blame. Don't you dare. <laughs> he knows. He knows. Patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game. Where for as little as two bucks a month, you can ask a question and we will answer on each and every single one of these Power Hour podcasts. First up from Burn Retinas. A post from a pro Sony account on Twitter slash X last week blew up about the PS3 being the most progressive console jump and the community offered corrective point of views. Is it more impressive that such a factually wrong take was thrown out there or that the responses were very level headed and reasonable? So the take was that the jump to the PS3 was the largest. I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, it was basically like uh, a guy, it, and the guy's like name was like Sony, like super fan forever, or some pro Sony, something or other, like total Sony. Somebody stand that loves Sony, yeah. That that was just claiming the PS3, the jump like from the, uh, the, jump from the PS2, or something. <laughs> yeah, the PS2 to the PS3 was like the biggest jump in quality and graphics ever from any generation. Hmm. Okay, having not seen the, uh, as I say all the time, not the Twitter guy, the only two cents I can give is, I mean, my mind kind of goes almost Atari to NES. Like, how ridiculous simple the Atari was to the NES. Because, I mean, you could make an argument that Super NES and Genesis up was a big deal, especially once you really got into the PlayStation. But there, there were some, there were some roughness with a lot of that early PlayStation and N sixty four. PS two to PS three. I'm trying to think. I mean, don't get me wrong. That was a goddamn impressive year. I would. I here's where I'll give credence. I think that was a more impressive jump than PS three to PS four. And PS4 to PS5, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. I, I oh, think yeah. that was a, a much larger jump. So in modern consoles, I think that's actually right. But in Lifetime, other than Atari to that NES, I, I don't think it's the worst take in the world. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, 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 I'm trying to think. Like, I'm really trying to struggle with... The easy answer feels like Super NES to the and, and Genesis to PlayStation N sixty four, but we look back at that's the worst age generation I, ever. I mean, I don't even think that's right. Just if you talk about PlayStation, like PS one to PS two was such a ridiculous jump in quality. I True. remember that too. Like True. I remember, like like I love the Ready to Rumble games, and like I played the shit out of them. And I remember playing even Ready to Rumble on, like, put it on a Dreamcast the first time, much less playing Ready to Rumble 2 on the mm. PS2. And I was like, oh, my God, this looks so much better. And then you kind of look at, like, the first-person shooters at the time and just, like, that total leap in graphics and quality and just performance, too, not just mm. the straight-up graphics. So, 
yeah, I mean, even among the lifetime of the PlayStation, I don't think that's right. Like, PS2 to PS3 was pretty crazy. And I mean, like, I'm with you, Brian. Like, I remember when we would go to our buddy Irzak's playing on a flat screen tube 720p TV on his 360 and being like, you were like, holy yeah. shit. Like, <laughs> dude, get, getting the, um, when Juan was living with me, I forget what the hell is the name of the, what's the other adapter when it's not HD, HD DVD, HD DVD, like, like, like some of the shit or no, no, I'm sorry. The SD cord was it SD plus or SD. I mean, it came with composite, but there's component video. It, so, yeah, the, orig well, the original didn't have yeah, HDMI yeah. yet. It had component. S video. S yes. video. I think yes. I'm right. sorry. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. My mind was blown by that. Like I was like, Phew. well, here we are. But but Jim, you just made a great point. I remember the first game I played on PS2. I think the first two games were Om Omi Nush or um, Oni Musha. No, no, no. Yeah, that and Gran Turismo three, three. four, three. Yeah, three was. I remember thinking yeah, like, yeah. "Holy fuck!" Like those blew yeah. my mind too. But there was also a small part of me like, I could kind of see that progression, and maybe because it was still tube TV to tube TV for me, like in my room, versus that jump from tube TV to HD TVs. Like it felt more bigger and especially the fact that i had a goddamn portable blu-ray player now with my ps3 like it, i don't know like shit felt different at that point i don't know what do you think blade like what 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 hop do you think was the most impressive in your eyes well i First, think the generation from the ps1 to the ps2 was definitely the best <laughs> <laughs> The best jump is from the Atari to the PS5. Everyone knows that. <laughs> um, Wait, I love I, you. <laughs> um, I personally think, you know, that, yeah, I, I don't know if this Gen 5 is, like, the worst age generation. I still have a hard time going back to Atari. I don't think everyone really talks about any of those Atari games, like, as fondly as anything from, like, the Gen 5 era, even if it aged, like, GoldenEye, people still talk fondly about it. Right. Um, honestly, I'll probably give the generic answer. I do think it's 4 to 5, like, that jump from, like, you know, the Genesis NES era to the PS1, Saturn, N64 era, because, quite frankly, most of that generation, the previous one was defined by games that were side-scrollers, that were just 2D, and then you actually have a brand new dimension that goes in front of you towards the screen. That, to me, is revolutionary right there, because now th the developers have to worry about a whole new dimension of when they make graphics or when they make level design, and to me, that is a huge jump. And, yeah, some of it is, is perhaps janky by today's standards, but we also have to go back within that mindset, you know, of how... Um, things were back in the day when they were just, like, testing with 3D. I mean, like, even, like, stuff... I know it's not a game from the from that generation, but, like, Star Fox, for example, I don't know how those wizards attempted doing, you know, 3D oh, on, on Super Nintendo, dare, but... Uh, oh, don't worry. I was, I'm gonna get later on to my beat franchises stuff later on, but <laughs> nevertheless, I'm just saying, to me, that's the biggest jump, even though I'm, I don't want to undermine, you know, the... PS2 to PS3 jump, because I think it's still an important jump nonetheless, because it's like a refinement um, stage, I would like to call it, you know. Um, you know, back in PS1, the graphics were kind of blocky, and, you know, with all those, like, popping pick, um, polygons and what have you, PS2 was a little smoother, but then, you know, PS3, that's what we ha really had, you know, HD, beautiful graphics. Like, games like Gears of War, for example, like, even back, you know, in 2006, that game still looks really, really good mm -hmm. today. Like, even when you yeah. play the original Gears of War, I'm not talking about the remastered version, whatever they had. I'm talking about the original one. It still looks good today. Right. And that's how well, like, you know, that generation held up from a technical standpoint. I'm not talking about artistically, because artistically, I don't like the generation because it's a lot of grays and blouse. I love piss. I love yellow. It is the best generation ever. <laughs> don't you hate on sepia tone, you sons of bitches. <laughs> That's what <laughs> Gears Three was. It's like, oh, well, you oh, don't like the gr the the red, grays, and uh, browns. Well, we add a new color. We have yellow, and I'm like, yay! Listen, in a post-apocalyptic world, it's not going to be Irish green. All right, you <laughs> sons of bitches. It's going to be sepia toned, and you accept it. Oh, okay, fine. And it does have at least Marcus Finis yelling, you know, to his father, Dad! And I'll yeah. never forget the blight of my life. But it was supposed to be a sad scene. He just hears go, Dad! <laughs> Can't, this breaks me. 
I, here's the deal. When but but to the question, yes. the one thing I'll take away from is I don't really think there is other unless somebody was like, well, NES is Super NES was obviously the biggest sleep. I think that's the only bad take I would really kind of be like, no. Like everything else, I feel like that you could make a valid argument. I think we all kind of said something a little different. But at the end of the day, it's not that bad of a take, but I am happy to hear that people didn't go full like ridiculous mode and freaking out over it. Yeah. So that's that. You know what? I, I'm more for that. Give some takes like that and stop trying to just be like the edgy guys. So, yeah, all the hipster. Well, no, <laughs> nobody actually likes Skyrim. Like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, you're corny as shit. Get out of here. If I may just add, I would say probably the only quote unquote take I wouldn't agree is just PS3 to PS4 because yeah. really it wasn't a big of. It, like it's still a jump, but it, I think it's the smallest jump because it's really it's from a very a, small. It's yeah. going from 720 to 1080 essentially, and that's not really something that like the average Joe would be able to like discern with their eyes. At least with PS4 to 5, yeah, there wasn't a big jump either. But there's also the whole like uh, performance upgrade with a lot of games running at 60 FPS, for example, which to me as a gamer that's really important. I it's like more important frame yeah. rates. To, yeah. yeah, something that's more important than, like, you know, ray tracing. And it's like, oh, look at this puddle. You can see your reflection. And I'm like, who gives a fuck? Okay. Man? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'll let Digital no, Foundry beat off no, to that. Like that's that. fine. Uh, I mean, yeah. If any, if, like, just, like, look at your TV in the background. I can see your games right there. Like, ooh, ray tracing. Right? Perfect. Yeah. The 2011 mm. Panasonic. Still the most clear picture you'll ever see. That's, <laughs> the, the, the plasma, right? Yep. The Vieira. Yeah, it's like... That girl is a beast. We tried to kill it as we were recording one time, and it's still kicking today. It's amazing. That's impressive. I'll give you that. I still have my plasma as well. Nice. I have have an OLED, so unfortunately I'm a pleb. (laughs) Fancy pants over here. I know. Compared to the plasma, I mean, come on. All right, Jamer, so what else we got? Brad, what the fuck are you doing? I'm moving my light because I just realized it was in my way. (laughs) Next up from Alex Perez. Has a game ever made you legit laugh and or cry? Besides Tetris 99 making Jim weep like a child for different reasons. Ah, damn it! <laughs> Spitting facts. <laughs> I mean, laugh, I will say, I, I said it before, the funniest game I ever played was probably the original South Park Stick of Truth. There was so many moments in that where I just was like, what the fuck is this? Like, it was like watching a really good episode of South Park. Um, cry? No, I don't think... I've, I've never hit that. I did say one of the things that tugged at my heartstrings was playing The Last of Us, having a daughter. No. That definitely was like, okay, this got me. But yeah, I've never... Yeah, I can't say I've ever cried to a game, but laughing, South Park, I don't think there's many games that have ever made me actually laugh as much as that. Other than, like, multiplayer moments where you fuck around with your friends, like, purposefully laugh because of a game, South Park. What about you guys? Wait. I, I need some thinking. You go ahead and go first, actually, because I'm thinking Son of a bitch, games. that's what I was trying to do. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, I'm with Brian on the crying. I don't think I've ever cried to a game. I think the closest I ever gamed to being like, well, actually, like I was talking about it before when we talked about Fury, like th- when I understood the story and like why the one character did what they did and put everything in motion, I was like, as a dad, once again, that hit me in the heartstrings there. But um, yeah, like maybe like there are close moments, but something would always ruin it. Like in the original Devil May Cry when Trish gets killed and like Dante's over her and then he has his famous, <laughs> I fill with your dark soul with light and his voice cracks. So it goes from, like, really sad to insanely hilarious, so it covers both bases there. Um, Yeah, I mean, I've laughed at a lot of games. I can't say I've ever cried to anything, though. There's a difference between, like, intentional laughing and, like, like legit, like, the game actually making you laugh because of the writing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. From, from yeah, like, yeah. legit jokes and shit. There's a ton of them out there, yeah. yeah besides it's, it's the, like uh, the, the foibles. It's like, like, it's like the Gears of War thing I just mentioned. The whole, like, duh thing. It's like, I can't take yeah. this seriously. And I want to be fair. Like, John DiMaggio, the guy who plays Mark of Phoenix, is a really good actor. Just the delivery just makes me laugh. <laughs> it's understandable. Wait, yeah. Bender plays him? you? At- <clears throat> or no, yeah, Joe John DiMaggio. DiMaggio. Never mind. Yeah. John, did I, say, I say Joe or John? You said John. I'm I yeah, be, the guy who plays Bender in Futurama. No shit, I never realized that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad I can drop Blade fact of the day. That's why we bring him here. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Now, what about you, Blade? Have uh, yeah. you ever uh, wept into a 
a soft tissue because of a game? You know, it's funny because, because of crying. Of the... Because of crying. <laughs> well, the, the, the last time I cried because of a game is Sonic Adventure 2 Battle when Jim was like, oh, I think this game is much worse than Shadow the Hedgehog. And I went, Me! Yeah, like that. Hurts. That's what I know. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> Um, but as of like, you know, it's funny with games, a lot of the times when I play a game that's supposed to be very emotional, it's because people always say, oh, this game is incredibly emotional, prepare to cry, you're gonna tear up so much, and I think the biggest example I can think of is Journey, because everyone's like, oh, Journey is one of the most emotional games of all time, and I played it, and I was like, it, it exists, it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. I still have like, to play that. Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, it's like a one hour game, you can like, knock it out of the way like that but oh, that's perfect for Jim no it's yeah it if there was a level a level 50 or 20 23 I mean you could have done if, that actually well, the totally journey collection comes with comes with journey oh, flower and another game so that's kind that of that its own series count. Nope. that's like it's a, a franchise. franchise there's my th count. there's one, one down no, and, and I get different Brian flower can't. again <laughs> fuck yeah different games I, I, I'm I, I'm negating it nope doesn't count you do an X with me daddy returns a flower yeah that doesn't count but um there are some games that maybe like legit tear up. Um, I would say Last of Us. I know it's a popular choice, but I think the storytelling of the game is excellent. But yeah. I think a more recent example was surprisingly Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I think that game mm. actually really touched a nerve with me because um, the game is beautiful. Like it's very visually striking. Like the whole like watercolor um, painting graphics that it has, and it does very uh, like it's it does its storytelling very well with uh, with little to no dialogue. And I gotta say, there were like two scenes in that game that I'm not gonna spoil because I encourage both of you, especially if you dig Metroidvanias to an extent, to play the Ori games. Yeah. But um, there are two scenes that um, I've grown to like enjoy some of the characters, and then something happens in the story, and then I was like literally shocked. And I noticed I actually had like a legit tear rolling down my cheek when th mm. that moment happened on screen. I was like, oh no, I have to actually continue now? How am I gonna do that and it comes from a story that they didn't have to hire like a triple a like hollywood actor to deliver the line it was just all done through graphics and um yeah what a phenomenal achievement that game is and i'm kind of beating myself for not ranking it any higher when i did my top 10 of it back in the day but we can do revisionist history to all the videos we've done back in the day but i can at least give it the proper respect now and as of games that make me laugh, there's a lot I can think of, but I, I'll hit one and I'll probably come up with some other stuff in the future. Um, we're talking about like 360 stuff, and there's this game called Amp 3, which I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with. I've Amped heard of it, chance. never played. Mm -mm. So Amp 1 and 2 originally came out for the original Xbox. Uh, kind of like a uh, Microsoft's own like uh, answer to... Um, the SSX franchise being a little bit more like realistic snowboard game as opposed to like the more like trick arcade SSX stuff. Uh, then I don't know exactly what happened, but um, with Amp 3, that was a launch title for the 360. Um, apparently 2K was publishing it, and I think there was a lot of changes like internally, that which I'm unaware of for the record. Um, and they decided to go bonkers with the story, and apparently they just decided to incorporate all those different, like, visual styles to the cutscenes. Like, sometimes you got, like, a puppet show, sometimes you got, like, anime parodies, sometimes you got cartoon oh. parodies, sometimes you got, like, them mocking, like, you know, old, like, you know, Japanese, um, you know, much like, like, you know... Like, the lip syncing is off and stuff like that. Sometimes they have, like, you know, musical parodies for no reason. And the writing is so good and so funny in that game. And you have no idea what's coming up. That you're saying to yourself, okay, I'll deal with, like, the okay snowboard gameplay. Just so it can go to the next cutscene. And the finale is that I'm, I'm you know, I'm not going to spoil too much. But I'll say this. It's actually, like, a musical number. That's genuinely one of the funniest things I've ever seen done in a video game to, like, conclude a story. And every time I show it to my friends, it's like, okay, I actually kind of want to play the game now. So it, it does something right. <laughs> Blade, I mean, Brian, I know you definitely haven't. But if, uh, did you ever see the anime FLCL Fully Cooly? Pretty cool, yeah, of course. Yeah. That sounds exactly like how they would do all their cutaway gags and shit like that yeah. in that show. Yeah, like the South Park thing. Yeah, like yeah with, with all the um, different styles. And the police dude, yeah, with the giant eyebrows. I remember that too. Yeah, they kind of do that too in that game. And I'm sure there's like other examples, like Brian mentioned the South Park games. They're also good. Um, Stanley Parable is another good one. Psychonauts, I also think, is a very funny game. So there's a lot of choices. <laughs> a lot. I'm sorry. I just thought of one that 
it shouldn't be as funny as it is, but if you ever get to play Postal 2 <laughs> in this day and age, it's... Woo, you'll get some... Uh, if you have a dark sense of humor, you'll get some laughs. Oh, it's like when it. we played Tiny Tank. <laughs> I mean, I know Postal's way more extreme with it. Like, I, I, yes, I get that. But, but even Tiny yeah. Tank, I was like, oh, there's some stuff in here. There's some stuff you want to get away with these days. There's some good humor in there. Yeah. I don't know and about Jim, you Postal. and I mentioned as far as, uh, like... It, it wasn't enough to make us tear, but we both acknowledged, like, in A Plague's Tale, like, you actually oh, get Christ. emotionally invested. And if you lose your little brother to those rats, it's so upsetting. You're like, what the fuck? Dude, what do like, you, our, what do you call it? Our, what do you call it? Uh, stepdad, uh, in-law, whatever you want to call him. Uh, he was, like, asking about, like, oh, what's a, I want to play something different that's, like, free right now. And I was like, well, the new Plague Tale game's out there. You should try that. And I was talking with him about it when we were hanging out at the family party. He's like, yeah, that game's brutal as shit. It was great, but oh my god, like, if you just go up and nose rats, man, that game doesn't mess around. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 I still need to play the new one. Just gotta get around to that. Same. Yeah, I think Same. that's... I'm gonna age the, I'm gonna age this video, but I know it's, like, free on PlayStation Plus or whatever right now, so... <laughs> Yep. Yeah, yes, it is. No, so we are so. aging us. But... I'm, I'm dating um, the C.A. <laughs> that's all I do. Good I'm, question, I'm a dating Alex, man. So I like that one. Yeah. So so am I. <laughs> it's called Silver Fox Blade. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That straight. actually wraps up the Patreon questions for this week. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Once again, thank you to everyone who submitted a question. Thank you for all the support. Check out the Patreon. You can get uh, bonus videos. Uh, actually, we are going to try. I'm going to reach out the next so we can start to schedule our next bonus episode yep. and you can also have game review requests movie review requests and all the bonus content that we'll just randomly throw up there i like yep. bonus thank content. you guys we always truly truly appreciate it and make sure you get those questions and even if jim fucks it up i don't fuck it up but <laughs> you can keep me in when. check by listening to us on spotify youtube or itunes give us subscriptions over there give us like leave some reviews leave some comments anything you do can help the page Jim, I got a question for you. Go on. As absolutely pissed off as you were at the Eagles game. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine actually deciding I'm going to pay top goddamn dollar to go see a football game in a open air arena and you have your beer freeze over within 20 seconds of opening it. How would you feel about that, Chambers? Well, Brian, considering I'd be paying 18 bucks for that goddamn beer, I'd be pretty fucking pissed. That's like, you know, getting punched in the face after getting kicked in the dick already. It's, it's not good. Just give me something. I feel like... You wouldn't mind the punch in the face. After the kick in the dick, there's a lot that can happen that's already, like... So for those out there who like... aren't American football fans, I mean, look, f well, no, football fans, fuck soccer. Yeah, don't so, don't even say that, you son of a bitch. Bro, I'm trying to be nice to our multicultural guest on the show. Bad <laughs> culture, good one. <laughs> fuck your culture, Blade. But uh, yeah, so uh, what do you call it? So the Kansas City Chiefs game. It started at negative four degrees Fahrenheit. It ended at negative twenty degrees Fahrenheit. Freezing in Fahrenheit is 32. So we are talking extreme cold. And football Sheesh. playoff football games don't come cheap. So you're paying hundreds of dollars. And you're not... I mean, you could sell the tickets, but then you're a bad fan. So what do you do? You got to go to the goddamn game. <coughs> I mean, th this story about this game, it was crazy enough the fact that they had to basically offer fans like 20 bucks... To come friggin' shovel snow. To no, 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 that was the Bills. Out. The Bills got had the, the, uh, the blizzard. Okay, the um, Chiefs was just but, super cold. And actually, the Chiefs fans could never live down being "Ooh, I'm so cold" when the fucking Bills fan maniacs literally shoveled out their own stadium to watch the game. Good for them. This is true. But uh, so I have the video going as we're talking. So here's the deal, though. There's a part of me, Jim, when I see this. Now, you know. Being in Philly, we get the we get some pretty goddamn we get ex pretty damn extreme cold, pretty damn extreme heat, but obviously we don't hit the lowest of lows. We're not going to ever hit a temperature quite like that. Um, Every once in a while, but it hasn't happened during a game. So here's the deal: you live there, you know it's like that. Why do you think that? Like, like this isn't a thing that you thought couldn't happen at negative friggin' twenty. Um, I guess my question is, if that happens to you, are you just fucking bummed the entire rest of the game? 
knowing now you can't even like drink and enjoy yourself. Oh my god, you're just sitting there with like your can that's frozen up. So we have a link below to a TikTok that perfectly shows the condition of the beers well, and everything I'm show- like that. I'm showing it as we're talking this whole time. Yep, for the yeah. for the audio side, Brian, the those people can click the link below to see it. But yeah, I mean you're paying 15, 20 bucks for a fucking beer. You're already sitting in negative 20 degree weather. You just want to have a little booze in you. Obviously, you did some tailgating. You better have done some goddamn tailgating. Just some kind of relief, and you get none. And, like, I've been at some cold games before. Like, I've, like, I've been at a game that was probably, like, slightly below freezing, and that sucked. Like, you have those heat packs in your gloves and shit like that, and even those are barely doing anything. You kind of stand there considering, should I just piss my pants to make myself warmer? You don't, because it'll be fleeting, but the thought crosses your mind. But... Yeah, I couldn't imagine doing anything like that. Like, Blade, what's the coldest like thing you've ever been to? I mean, I know you live in California and you came from Israel, so you're not exactly exposed to this a lot. I mean, short sleeves, <laughs> I mean, already, yeah. I mean, uh, the coldest thing, I mean, probably if I ever went to, like, a stand-up, you know, routine that you will ever have, that's probably going to be the coldest I'll ever be. <sighs> Man, he shit down your throat. Oh, my God. I can that's taste it. That's more Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> I can taste the corn. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, you know, first of all, I hope you're okay. Like, it, like jokes aside, I hope this whole, like, weather situation hasn't been affecting you to all that much so far. No, it was we're like, it was in the cold. teens this morning, but we're used to that from winter time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I literally check where I'm at right now, which I'm, I haven't actually, but you son of a bitch. Yeah. It's definitely not in the same like ballpark. You bastards are like, it's 60. I need a it's sweater. 50 Ooh, actually fuckers. funny enough. So, <laughs> so I, that's why I'm saying I have no room to like, actually like, you know, pretend that I'm anywhere near that. Um, no, I, I think the closest thing is like, you know, if you go to, um, like San Francisco, everything is like, you know, foggy, I would say. And that's because like, you know, how close it is to the water. Watch but... the, oh, foggy. Okay. Foggy. <laughs> F-O-G-G-Y. <laughs> All right, just keeping you in check there, buddy. <laughs> Dwayne just throwing out the say? hate crimes. <laughs> <laughs> because there's a lot of fog. Is that better? <laughs> wait, wait, no, I thought I thought it was Brian before. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you son Jeez. of a bitch, Jim. Don't you, don't you make me start pulling off the B-roll before bonus episodes. What? I don't know what you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never really been um, in a super cold climate before, so... That for me will be kind of a change, but I usually prefer the cold weather over the warm weather. But um, I, I don't think I ever want to experience like a flash freeze. Like I don't ever want to go to a place, bring a beverage, and all of a sudden, like you know, I'm walking with like blocks of ice. Jim, all I'll say is, uh, you spoke about going to places that were cold. The wife and I went to a um, the uh, the Flyers Winter Classic the one year, and it was. The wind was a whipping, um, but it's nothing like this. Like, yeah, my drinks weren't freezing over and you, it's funny. Cause you mentioned pissing yourself. See, I know you do that so often that it would actually be funny if you did. And then it froze to yourself and you couldn't get your pants off. Like, that that, that, would, that would have been my luck if I did it. <laughs> Much like many things I've done in my life, Brian, a momentary, a momentary enjoyment goes to disaster right after. <laughs> So yeah, um, well, hey, don't judge me. Football ship, fans, ship sailed. <laughs> if I can give you one, this piece is your of fifth advice, time here. <clears throat> um, certain alcohols up to thirty-five or forty percent do not freeze. I don't know if I want to say a negative twenty with wind whipping it, but I know in a freezer they will not freeze. So you got to get higher alcohol percentages. Beer does not cut it, as Jim and I have learned many a time. You think you put a beer in a freezer, it's going to be okay. Unless it's a certain percentage, it will freeze over and you're fucked. So bring a flask, put it up your butt, sneak it in. That you don't need a prison wallet. You can just buy it at their stadium. Right, you just got to keep things warm. Desperate times. God damn it, Jim. <laughs> Two forty four podcast later, it's still the same shtick, eh? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, but yes. Blade. Some things never change. Speaking of keeping things the same, I peaked at fourteen. As we've said, you are the the most uh, reoccurring guest we have, and one of the things we've been doing is always talking about the games of the previous year. So this year, we got the good old Rolling Stone top twenty of the year. Now, I'll I'll, I'll mix this in as we're talking. I actually did find six or seven other 
lists that were similar. And I will say, this seems to be, of the years we've done, for the most part, capturing what most places would consider them a top 20. Good, yeah. So we want to go ahead. We want to dive right into it. And I wanted to pick, I wanted to pick, I picked this article and I wanted to pick something off the beaten path. Like we could go our Kotaku's and our polygons and get mad at their stupid artsy fartsy choices that no one played. I want to see what like something not known for gaming had to say about this. And I, yeah. and I think it's also cool the fact that like every year we like choose something different in terms of like the website where we choose to quote unquote analyze. So yeah, why not try Rolling Stone this year? Why not? Let's yeah. try. <laughs> and here's the deal. I know I can speak for Jim and I. There are a lot of games on this list that are... Don't speak are, for me, you Irish fuck. I'm, I'm speaking for you because, you know, you're... I own you. So, but here's the deal. <laughs> There's a lot of games I have FOMO over that I'm like, fuck, I wanted to play. And we've already mentioned a few of them through this episode. So, obviously, we say this every year, Blade. We know you definitely probably have at least hit upon some of them more than us. But let's start with number 20, and you already mentioned it, Blade, Hi-Fi Rush. I mean, that's a game that I heard so much about throughout the year, but uh, it's one, me personally, I didn't have as much of an interest in, but man, it seemed like people who played it loved the shit out of it. Yeah, um, I think it just came out of nowhere, literally, like it was literally out the date was announced, and that usually doesn't happen. Like, it was a shadow I, drop, yes. It, 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 usually a shadow drop is basically after finishing, you know, all ten endings and the final ending, you're like, I'm dropping this game and I'm never playing it ever again. That's a shadow drop right there. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Still bad than Sonic uh, Adventure. But yeah, I, I'm not going to reiterate like all the things I've said earlier. I'm just going to pretty much just say, you know, it's just a very fun, colorful game and just the fact that I'm glad that <coughs> new franchises, like new IPs that don't have to be sequels, can still find success and a, and an audience in this day and age. And I'm just glad it's doing as well as it is. Yeah. And Jim, you said this is one you definitely want to try, right? I do want to play it. Uh, and it's actually been announced to have a Switch board coming. So it's cool that like... A, of course you go to the worst fucking system just so you can have it convenient. Just play it on real shit, Jim. God. Look, I either I'm not gonna have a performance jump. I either play it on an original Xbox One or a Nintendo Switch. So at that point, I might as well go the convenience route. It doesn't Just matter. Buy at that a point. new console. They're available now. God. I am poor. I am mortgage <laughs> poor. I am home improvement poor. Jim, I am you plastic are... collection bullshit poor. Jim. I have problems, Brian. I'm Set bad with money. Those, look at all those games you have behind yeah. you and all that beautiful decoration. I'm gonna cry for five hundred dollars. Jim, I'm a mid-British woman, Jim, and I will cry I for money. Say, Anything I you, have to pull are, are, I have a wall. Yeah, Jim, are you gonna? Say, are you just Lady Decade? Do I need to put you in a red dress and so you can cry about how you don't have any money? When yes, you have thank you, collection? Brian. That's what I insinuated a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, can you prop your hands like this and be like, some, "Please, yeah. sir, may I have some more?" I'm, you know what? Actually, for this episode, I'm giving you a top hat and a dress and a thumbnail. So you're welcome. Oh my God. <laughs> the inner Jimmy's actually, finally coming out. I can't. So happy. You know what? I have such a good idea thumbnail. right now for. The Give thumbnail. me a completionist beard while you're at it. I'm, oh, I, it it's all coming together, Jim. You <laughs> son of a bitch. Let's fucking go. Let's bring this yeah. whole thing down with me. All right. So, all right. So, Jim, it's funny you mentioned because there are like three, three entries on this list. I do have a problem with where you said artsy bullshit, and number nineteen starts it off. What the fuck is Thirsty Suitors? I have never heard of this. I, Blade, please inform us, because I read this. <laughs> I've seen other ones talk about it. What the fuck is it? I, um... <laughs> you know, I hate being stumped, but this is one of those rare occasions that I actually kind of am, because... Fucking Blade doesn't know it! Yeah, because I usually try my best, you know, because... Let's be real, when it comes to, like, the everyday information, usually the AAA stuff is what tends to get the most attention. Yeah. And then, like, towards the end of the year, like, maybe I listen to some podcasts, you know, like Giant Bomb, for example, where they talk about the lesser popular stuff. But Thirsty Suitors, that's one of those things I haven't really heard anything about. And more interestingly, I don't think it even got nominated for anything like the VGAs or anything else. So this is kind of, like, new to me, but... It says a little bit like Scott Pilgrim, a little bit like Yakuza, and that sounds pretty cool to me already, so there's probably some justification to its placement here. I mean, by the name, I just assumed it was another one of those weird-ass dating sims, but it's claimed to be a rhythmic timing, turn-based role-playing, over-the-top battle. 
as you said, it's like Yakuza mm-hmm. and Scott Pilgrim. I don't know what the fuck it is. I saw that and I just went, really? Like, you just got to get that funky one in there. It's not even the funkiest one on this list. But mm-hmm. whatever. Number 19 doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Yeah. yeah. It's on the number one, so I'm going to be like, you know, robber, 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 how yeah, dare you? It is what thing. it is. So, yeah, whatever. Let them have the one. So then, <laughs> or num- the 17. <laughs> number 18, uh, one that I felt like kind of came and went Super Mario RPG. I feel like I, mm. I remember a very small period of people talking about it, and then it did kind of fizzle out. I don't doubt that it was probably fun as shit, but mm. I don't know. What is your guys' take? Like, I mean, it's a remake of a game that hasn't been ported in, you know, 20-some years. So people were very excited about it. Yeah. Um, I didn't hear a lot of complaints about the little changes they did here and there with it. it. seems like it stayed pretty close to the original. So, I mean, it sparked that whole argument of if a remake, along with Resident Evil, if a remake should be um, considered for Game of the Year because it's just yeah. a remake. So that was in that category. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Um if I ever like, I've owned Super Mario RPG on a Super NES for like years now, and I've never touched it. So maybe the Switch version would be the one I eventually get around to. But I'm still just like, eh. I like. Are, but, are you are, shocked at all that it wasn't like considering the love and the call for Super Mario RPG that it didn't actually get better reception? Like you talked about remakes, and there's a there's a few on this list. I'll I'll spoil that right now. Um, Oh, remakes no. can be like actually extremely well received. Are you shocked this wasn't better well received? I guess just because it didn't reinvent the wheel that much. It, I mean, it was. It seemed to be like it gave people exactly what they wanted, but then people also kind of went. Well, here's a good example. So like, I'm in the Thought Cops Discord, and like Grant is a huge Paper Mario fan, and that was like kind of the uh, you know spiritual successor to Super Mario RPG, and a lot of the people in there were like. Yeah, I'm enjoying this, but the more I play it, the more I realize I just like Paper Mario more. It's that kind of thing. So it's a mm. thing where people enjoyed it, but it wasn't like it still like kind of showed its age, I guess, in a way. I don't know what you think, Blade. Um, I, I think the reason why people don't talk about it much is also the timing of its release because it was like around the end of November, and that's where all the Game of the Year stuff like. Originally, that's why the discussion started with the VGAs in early December. So that's maybe the reason why the hype kind of down. But I remember during the release week, like that was like right the week before like Thanksgiving, I believe, that a lot of people have been streaming and enjoying it. Um, but I think, honestly, the teens is a good place for it. It's like, you know, it's a, it's a remake that pretty much did exactly what it's supposed to do. It set up what it needed to do and... There's some, like, bells and whistles. I heard there's, like, a little bit, like, you know, um, refinement on some of the gameplay mechanics. There's, like, I think an additional, like, dungeon you get to do in. I'm, I love the fact, you know, in terms of, like, the visual aesthetics, they kept the stocky character designs. Like, I'm glad it's not, like, you know, the modern Mario. It's, like, you know, the stocky, like, you know, short Mario instead from the original game. And I think that was a great touch. Yeah. Um... But, but yeah, just like just like Jim, I own the original and I haven't played it, and I, I mean, kind of want to, yeah, and I kind of want to play it actually before I play the remake because I always like playing, you know, both versions just to see which I prefer. I kind of did the same thing with um, RE4. We'll get to it. We'll get to it, obviously. But um, spoiler, <laughs> yeah, because that game is not gonna make any list. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I think that's a, an appropriate place. In fact, I'm just glad it, it just made it in general. So yeah, good for it. I think it's a fine place. Yeah. Well, speaking, let's move right along to remakes. Dead Space. Which, <laughs> you know, wow. th- this is one where it's interesting because <clears throat> I looked into it. I really love the original game. This was one... I, I've, I've said this about all the Resident Evils. If you're going to do a remake, you got to throw in some differences with the game. Like maybe some surprises and this game from what i've heard and what i've read about it's it's mostly graphical a little bit of uh, operational like how you actually function but story-wise it's it's exactly the same majority of it is exactly the same so it's just a cleaner better looking version for modern audiences who want better graphics of an all-timer can you Which, even call it a remake at that point? Is it more of like just an HD remaster? I mean, I guess there was just enough. Some of the weapons performed a little differently. Like, 
But yeah, there's no like brand there's no Lisa Trevor like in Resident Evil Remake. There's no like oh whole new section. So Yes, while you are introducing a brand new audience to a game that what was the original even when did that even come out? That was, was two thousand eight, something like that. Was it eight? eight. Okay, yeah. There, there's kind of, I remember because it was like fifteen years. So yeah. Oh, I, okay. I, I I'm very much of the feeling that if it reinvigorates and brings a brand new audience, it should be valid as a game of the year. This one, I felt like everyone was like, "Yeah, it's good. It's what you would want out of a remake." But it did nothing different enough. So if it's going to ever be on the list, I'm okay with it in this spot. But it's pushing it's pushing it a little bit. I'll just say that. Yeah, everyone I heard online was like, oh, man, this made me realize how much I like Dead Space. That was like kind of it. That was it. Yeah. Can I provide some pushback now? Yes, please. I actually think it should be higher. Because I absolutely Ooh, adored it, actually. Really? Okay. I I was going into, like, the remake. Let's put it this way. This was a January release. That To me, Dead Space remake was, like, the, the sign of how 2023 was going to turn out. That was the first game that started breaking, you know, like, Metacritic, like, 90s and stuff <laughs> like that. That, to me... Like, shouldn't be scoffed at. Like, it was a good start to the year. But even more so, they did a few things that improved upon the original and made it, to me, the definitive version. They made upgrades a bit easier to do. Instead of having, like, you know, multiple menus and multiple different stations to go to, you only have, like, you know, two to go through. Like, you have a shop and you have an upgrade station and that's it. Like, you have to, like, tinker with. It makes upgrading your stuff or buying new weapons a whole lot easier, especially uh, handling with your inventory. Narratively, and that's kind of like what Brian was saying earlier, I think they've done a much better job in this game compared to the original for one key reason. Isaac Clark talks. And that to me is huge because the the first game focuses on Isaac a lot. And every time there's like a revelation, you know, it's like, Isaac, I've done this in the past. And then you see Isaac reacting. All he can do is just like... It's like the Master Chief model for the time, yeah. Well, at least Master Chief has, like, you know, like, catchphrase, but Isaac doesn't say anything. Like, he's just a True. blank slate with, like, no dialogue. So they actually got the same actor from Dead Space 2 and 3 and actually had him record dialogue for the game. And moreover, it's not like, you know, just, like, you know, a line or two. Isaac is actually a proactive protagonist in the story. When something happens, I'm like, you know, Isaac, I want you to fix this. It's like Isaac actually says, hey, I know what I'm going to do in this. Let me go to this station. I'm going to fix this contraption. Maybe we can get out of this. Like, he's actually participating in the story. So I actually care about escaping this, like, haunted um, space station. And the third thing is the gameplay is much better, but not necessarily just because, like, you know, like, it's modern controls, but they also removed some of the filler stuff out of it and just placed it with better uh, gameplay segments. And I think, um, I don't know how if you both played the original Dead Space at all, if you remember it roughly. Oh, yeah. I didn't play the whole thing, but I played some. Oh, do you remember the turret section in the original? Like, when you're on a it's, turret and you have to shoot, like, I, stupid I've heard asteroids? it's extremely much, much better on this one. Oh, it's not just much better, it's gone. They don't have the turret section anymore. <laughs> no one likes the turret section. So instead, what you have to do is you literally have to go out in space and you have to mark asteroids and then shoot a giant laser beam at them instead. And it actually requires you to move around the area in zero G, but also make sure that your oxi oxygen level doesn't go out as well. So you have both the intensity of the moment and also feeling badass for shooting giant asteroids and later on a massive boss. Spoilers, but... I I I think it's, I feel so bad for the Dead Space remake because it had to come out in the same year of the Resident Evil 4 remake. So everyone forgot about its existence because they're two like you know uh AAA horror games and mm -hmm. only one can, you know, reign supreme and unfortunately in this case Capcom got a W there, but I do think the Dead Space remake deserves some recognition. I mean, it doesn't have to be the best game of the year, but just saying, you know, it's a simple, like, graphical touch of does it a disservice. It mm. it does the story better, does the gameplay better. In fact, there's almost, like, little to no load times, which is crazy. Like, it's like how many load times were there original, and then it just transitions from, like, room to room into story segments, like, seamlessly. I think it's surprisingly a huge achievement, especially since it came out a month after um, 
Callisto Protocol, and it's oh, kind of funny how Callisto Protocol had like some of the um, creative design behind the original Dead Space, and then it's like, well, EA Motive, your turn. What are you gonna do next? Well, that's and where I think also park. fucked it up. I think the hype with Callisto Protocol came out, and they're like, oh, it's kind of like a new Dead Space, and then this came out, and it was like, eh, like, like it was already tainted. So yes, no, but but I hear you. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that, I would say give it a, give it a chance, especially since you like horror so much. Both of you, I oh, I, no, I will give it there, get a fair no chance. There's no doubt. I will. I'm I'm deep into that. I think uh, it's not a matter of I won't just like I'll probably love the shit out of it. Oh, like Jim said though, I'm always a little a little leery to give too much of a pass to to these remakes. But I'm not saying it's we'll number one more. of the year yeah. or anything. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> for the record, we'll we'll, we'll hit up. Go ahead, Chambers. I was going to say, before we take a short break so I can get another beer, I just got to say, so Blade's defense and pooping on us and our opinions of the game is exactly why we bring him on for these top 20 lists. Absolutely. I need to provide that, pushback. That is, the opi- <laughs> that is the breaking opinion that we needed right there. Scored yeah. us. Yeah. Well, school's in session. I, I like how <laughs> that, you had That's to, what I like to fucking I, hear. I also like how you had to announce that we needed a break before you made your point, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't even think about so that. So be ready for the terrible jump cut right now. All right. So continuing right along with a franchise that I am woefully unfamiliar with because I haven't played any of the games. But at number 16, we have Like a Dragon, Ishin, Ishin. I know I'm fucking that up. But um, you need to go back Jim, to Weeaboo I, School. I'm already going to answer <laughs> for you. I know you know nothing about it. I know you've played none of it. Blade, can you give us any insight onto this ga- into this game? You know what's really interesting about that franchise is that the original name is actually called uh, Ryuga Kotoko, which means like a dragon. But funny enough, when it was you know brought to the West, they called it Yakuza. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of crazy now how this franchise, which was named Yakuza for so many years, is now it's officially like a dragon, like the a Japanese dragon. name, which is kind of cool how things ended up and. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't really played a lot of those games, but you know the whole like um, uh, beat uh, five franchises challenge you have for this year. I'm gonna tell this to people right now: don't do Yakuza. Those games are big. Those games. Oh, I are hear. I hear they're the longest. Humongous. Yeah. yeah, they're like. I think like the shortest one is like maybe 20, 25 hours, and if that's the shortest oh, one, fuck. I mean. Yeah, I mean, that being... I'm, I'm saying in a sense, you know, that those games are great, though. Don't get me wrong. It's one of those few games that actually do, like, side content right. <laughs> in a sense that even, like, a side story, which, you know, you're supposed to help those, like, punks join an idol band in Japan is actually kind of endearing. Because they're, like, biker again. It's like, oh, we want to be dancers now. And you actually care about those three punks out of nowhere. And you want to help them dance better, which doesn't even make sense. But you actually... <laughs> And enthralled into their life and their story. The fact that the game can do that for like a, a a single mission that's like thirty to an hour long, thirty minutes to an hour long is astounding. And that's like the power of the Yakuza franchise of how well it does even the smallest stories. Like it gives them the like this grandeur and yet this humanity as well. I'm bringing this up because Ishin is basically what if Yakuza instead of taking setting place in a modern day was actually taking place in um. Uh, feudal Edo Japan, like the Age of the Samurai, and a lot of the characters from the franchise, like I'm pretty sure you've all, you at least you two know uh, Kazuma Kiryu, like the main dude, like with the yeah, yeah. with the facial hair, being like, um, so this is like kind of quote unquote is like ancestor. I think his name is Ryoma, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't played the game myself, but instead of you know having you know like fighting in the streets of Kamurocho, you pretty much have sword fights essentially, and more like you know samurai action and stuff like that, and. The, the, the problem is that it's not like I don't want to play because I would love to one day, like, you know, just turn off the wall and, like, just play through all the Yakuza games because um, I would say this. If you only play one, play Zero. Zero is fantastic. If you only have to play one Yakuza game, Zero will be the one. But other than that, um, Ishin looks very interesting to me because it's a different time period. And they let the characters be in a whole different environment. They're still the same characters. They're just in a different setting. And that, to me, is... Very unique. And I heard it's also a very um, sizable adventure as well, which I know we were just, like, you know, ragging on, oh, the shortest game is 25 minutes, good luck, but it's more so a testament to how much this game is packed with content without 
like filler, which is really hard because nowadays when we live in an age when they're like open world games and it takes like, you know, five hours to go from like point A to B, everything is very condensed in the Yakuza games that your point of destination is not that far, just like a few blocks from where you're at. And I think that makes like all doing all the side quests in the main story a lot more streamlined and um I would like to play Asian one day, but let me get through <laughs> the first game and the second game and so on. But uh, to yeah. you two, if you ever want to get into Yakuza, I would say zero. I've nice. heard that many times. And yeah, I don't think I'm touching it for a while, given what we're doing this year. Yeah. But it is a series that I think I would enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, that is a, like many of my holes, a gaping <laughs> hole in my uh, gaming experience. So. Fuck, Jim. <laughs> James uh, well, it's holes. funny because <laughs> speaking of, of franchises or just games in general, the Star Wars universe, um, there are so many games I want to dive into, mm -hmm. but this one, number 15, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, mm -hmm. from what I've seen, from what I've heard, nothing but greatness. And there's so many Jedi or Star Wars games that I want to dive into. This just adds to the list. It's at the point just how I'm sure most people feel about friggin' the star wars uh film universe there's just too much out there at this point you don't even know where to begin but this game it looks great yeah obviously i i, I mean if if anything even though i've never played it i am almost shocked it's not higher on the list because i feel like a lot of people really enjoyed it yeah slight spoiler we're gonna be hitting apparently the souls like portion of the uh <laughs> games of the year list but uh <laughs> yeah uh, I didn't play the one that came before it either, but I hear they're great. You know, you slap Dark Souls with a Star Wars coat of paint, and people seem to really enjoy it. So, one I'd like to play someday. I have no idea if I ever will get around to it, but, you know, heard nothing but good things. Yeah. I, I think you really hit the nail on the head there with the whole, like, Star Wars fatigue that's going on. And I can kind of blame the new trilogy to that, which I'm not going to go into the movies and, like, what I think about them, but... Right, and, shit. And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I think that Rise of Skywalker, that was the episode 9, I think that was the That one. is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. That killed Star Wars for me, in a way. Like, I just didn't really want to do anything Star Wars. Even when people, like, raving about Baby Yoda or whatever, I was just like... Okay, I mean, Baby Yoda exists, good. I mean, I don't, I don't care, but that was also like the same time where the first one, Fallen Order, came out. And I haven't finished Fallen Order, but yeah, it, I, I mean, saying that it's a Souls game kind of does it a disservice, because it's also a really good, like, action game that really evokes, like, the hand-to-hand -hand combat that uh, Force uh, Unleashed did about a decade before, if you remember that game. Yeah. It doesn't have, like, as, it does have some, like, you know, um, forced... Um, uh, four stuff in it, like you know the whole telekinesis aspect, yeah, but it's also it. like you know the sort of sort of um, sword fighting stuff, and uh, the story is well told. You can tell it's a Star Wars production; like uh, they actually invested a lot in the acting portion. Um, I know the guy who plays the main character, Kal Ketsis, or whatever his name is. I know he was like, I think it was like the Joker in the Gotham TV show. Like the one with like young Bruce. I, Wayne. I know him from Shameless, so that's where I know him from. Shameless, yeah, yeah as say, well. He, he's he's better well known from Shameless, but yes, he was also a Joker. I, I actually haven't seen Shameless, so that's pretty shameless of me. So there you go. Son, but I'm you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, well, this is like we'll add it to the list of son of a bitch that we only have from like the five times prior. And, uh, <laughs> make a shirt out of it but at this point uh, I enjoyed uh, Fallen Order but I think it was also kind of Star Wars out so that's kind of like why I never finished it but I've heard that um, Survivor um, is a much more refined version of that so I would like to try it it's just I don't really have the urgency of trying it anytime soon but I, I would love to get Same. to it eventually yeah. I mean I mean, I like yeah. the idea of like you know Survivor and Star Wars like you go to like an island you vote people out you may win a million dollars that sounds pretty cool yeah Oh, no, wait, that's a different no, survivor. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <clears throat> but Show. Out, he, he gave a little bit of a spoiler, but uh, in the, the current gen of how we went through way too many zombie games, then too many shooters, <laughs> now it's Souls-type games, and the next one is Lies of P. I had no idea where, this is a Pinocchio game. Like, I heard I, this game come out, and everyone was talking about how cool it was, and it's like... A Souls game that's like different enough from Souls that like, like I guess the dodging mechanics are way different from Souls games. So like, the Souls diehard said it sucked, but everyone else said it was really good. It's more and Bloodborne than Souls, I would say, in terms of dodging. Bloodborne, probably. Is so yeah, yeah, but like at the end of the day, it is Souls like, and yeah, yeah Jim, to your point, 
same deal. When I read this description in this goddamn article where it's like, what if Pinocchio were hot? I'm like, what? Like, what the fuck are you even talking about? Well, there's the P. Can, now I get the title. Can, can, can yeah. I top that? <laughs> can I top that? What yeah, if Pinocchio well. was portrayed by Timothy Chalamet? <laughs> oh, God. By he Wonka? looks like him. <laughs> it does. It really does. It looks like freaking Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> so this is a game where I remember, I feel like this is an extremely hyped game. And there was a small period where I heard praise, but <clears throat> once again, I felt like it just died off really quickly, which being at part, being at number 14, I feel maybe is, is justifiable. Um, haven't mm. played it from the footage I've seen from it. Yeah. I think I would actually hit this up quicker than I would the, or some of the other souls games because it seems a little more fast paced. But um, I don't know. I'm for it, even though I'm shitting on it a little bit of the million souls like clones we're gonna get. It, give interesting franchises into that style. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Who the yeah. fuck ever thought of a Pinocchio in a game like this? Yeah. Fine. Yeah, and I think it's also like the developers' like very first game. So the fact that they made something of this high of a caliber from a visual, like, technical perspective is impressive. Um, my original introduction to this game was pretty weird because I heard Lies of P and I thought, are they making a Life of Life of Pi game? Like, am I going to be on a boat with a tiger? I yeah. thought it was like a, like a misspelling at first. Like, I wasn't even sure what people were talking about. I thought the same, yes. Yeah, okay. like, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one because I feel like I'm the only idiot that was like, Ang is making a video game? What's going I'm on? I'm always here to look one? dumb. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this will uh, be this is faces. On, on the list of I'm sure in five years, Jim and I will try yeah. it out. Be like, but yeah, actually, actually good. to touch on the Pinocchio thing, the one thing I haven't actually played it much yet, but one of the things I've heard that they actually weave into the story about the whole Pinocchio aspect about um you know the whole like lying thing because that's the whole point of like you know Pinocchio, and the idea is that they're like moral they're actually moral decisions in the game that you actually may have to lie in order to quote unquote progress in the story and it kind of affects certain events. And I think that idea is pretty cool. You know, as it is. I heard from a lot of people that the narrative of Liza P carries that game besides the gameplay. Like it's surprisingly very thought provoking and Wow. You know, for a Souls game, usually... Because I'll be frank, I mean, I, I since last year, I actually have played Elden Ring. I haven't finished Elden Ring because I have other things to do in my life, and I spent like 80 hours on that stupid game, and I don't Does have all me? the time in the world. Yeah! But I, I never really connected to the Souls games in terms of, like, their story, because a lot of the time it's just kind of like flavor no text, and, it's and you have... Bullshit. Yeah. You have to talk to, like, you know, like, random NPCs, and they say, like, you know, some random stuff, and I just never connected to the lore of those games. I respect it, don't get me wrong, it's just not my thing. I like it when my story is, like, you know, no, told in a very, like, that. cinematic manner. Wait, you have to go to the Grixis of Gondor to get the Flower of Algernon, goddammit, or else the world will die. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah I, it's I, near the buttocks of the gods. <laughs> I'm not gonna, enthralled. I, this is where I'm going to disagree with you. See, I, 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 I like that you respect it, but I'm sorry. If I have to go to a wiki to read the story of it because I didn't read every goddamn parchment I picked up, that's just some lazy-ass shit. Like, fine. It's cryptic, there's, I would say, there, more so there, than there, lazy. <laughs> there, there's lore, but, like, come on, man. Like, you can you can give some narrative. You just didn't want to do it in a way that's palatable because you wanted yeah. to be edgy. Fuck you. Yeah, that, that's kind of why I'm interested in Life Lies of P because at least I heard those like so there are cutscenes that explain the story more <laughs> so than you know just random NPCs that spout a lot of you know something Jibber. about fingers. Like they talk about fingers in Elden Ring all the time. I don't want to be fingered by a video game. That's why Jim loves it. <laughs> Fuck what game? Uh, oh, what? Uh, what is it? Is it Bloodstain? It's one of the. Uh, no, it's Blasphemous. That's where you have to collect all those <laughs> fingers and shit like that. Bloodstain, is that what Tim. happened to you yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> Blasphemous is another thing that came out. Blasphemous 2, I think, that oh, came out last year. I, I, want, I want to hit on that. Once we're done this list, I'll say that. Ooh, all right. Ooh, ooh. So next um, up is going to be actually keeping with FromSoft, because we're going from FromSoft clones to FromSoft itself, <laughs> with the with Armored Core 6, Fires oh. of Rubicon. Yeah, uh, this I've never played when... a fire, or uh, I've never played one of these. Except for I've played, I played front, or I've never played Armored Core. I have no idea. Wait, Front Missions Armored or FromSoft? Did I fuck Jesus that up? Christ I fucked that up. 
I don't know how you Man. fucked that sentence up worse as it went on, but you really <laughs> fucked it. Like you, you committed to the fuck up and just continued to fuck up the fuck I up. I thought so I was I, right. I don't even know what you were I trying to say. I thought I was right. Here's what I'm going to say about this this game. We talked about it when it was really like we were shocked. We're like, holy fuck, FromSoft is going to make this like this was their new thing. It has to hit like hotcakes. I didn't. All right, it is I, from soft. Fuck me. All right, I'm I'm yeah. like half wrong. Fuck you. But but I didn't hear dick about this game. Um, it looked cool from the trailers, but man, did I not hear a fucking peep. Yeah, everyone was really hype, and then it came and went. Yeah. Mm, I'm trying to remember like when it came out, but I think it must have been the month that August or something. It was like Bo- okay, Baldur's Gate month. There we go. That's probably why no one talked about it because everyone was like Baldur's Gating at the time. Oh, um, that's a good point. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think though. I, I mean, let's focus on Armored Core. Is that this is the sixth game in the franchise, but it's also like the first Armored Core like main one since the whole FromSoft success. I would say. Yeah. Because I believe the f- um, five, I think, came out. I want to say like in 2012, and that's I believe a year after um, Demon Dark Souls, Souls came. Uh, Dark Souls. I think, no, Demon I Souls think is like Souls. 09, I think. Yeah. Oh nine, yeah, you're right, you're yeah. right. So. Um, which is crazy because uh, Miyazaki son, the guy who directed all those Souls games, his very first game was actually Armored Core 4 in 2007. And he hasn't worked on an Armored Core since. Someone else directed Armored Core 6, but the point is that what I liked about Armored Core 6 is the fact that they're back to doing Armored Core. They're not going to say, oh, this is Armored Core, but with Souls elements into it. They're just making it specifically an Armored Core game, which is, I'm glad. I like the divide. Not everything has to be a Souls game. It's right. not like, you know, Armored Core, but this time it's like a Souls game. So if you die, you have to go all the way back and get your experience. No, it's oh it's a pure mech experience, which is what people want. And... Um, I, I, the, the problem with the armored courses, is there's just so many of them. Yeah, there's like six, you would think. But like each game has like its own like offshoots and spin offs. I think like on the PS2 alone, there's something like seven different armored core games, as far as I'm aware of. Oh and my God. I'm PS- looking at them all right now. There's a yeah. Time. It's like you can, it, it's a lot to really catch up with. But I would like to give that series a shot, but. It's just I don't really know where to start, especially since um, since the announcement from the VGAs in 2022 that it was coming out. The prices of all those games uh, went up. It, they course. went out down since, except the very first Armored Core game. It went, I think, from like 20 bucks to like 150 or something, which I'm like, well, great. <laughs> Isn't that delightful? Well, uh, fuck. But, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy, you know, that we can have a... A mech game, which let's be let's be real, it's more of a niche sort of genre, like the mech genre, that can still sell pretty well. It's the best selling game in the franchise, so good for From that they can still release, you know, kind of like you know, um, a game that fulfills a certain niche and can still be a bestseller. Um, but yeah, the reason why you haven't heard a lot about it is because other bigger stuff came out, but it did well for its fans, and that's probably the best you can ask for, really. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on to some real bullshit. The art, I'm just going to call it the artistic pick of this list. Venba, which is a cooking simulator. The fuck is this? I never heard of this crap. And you know what? And I mentioned I looked at six or seven on our list. Guess what? It's not on any of them. So Mm. whoever, whoever wrote this, this is that, that, that gym pick of it all that, you know, I played this game and it was very pleasant. (laughs) Just yeah, the they way have a they, monocle they, on a top hat when you say that too, and like a pinky. When they wrote it up, they even re- recognize it's a very short game, very straightforward. It's literally about a family cooking some meals. Yeah. How that's above the games we've just mentioned is fucking insane. But you got to get your uh, I'm different pick in there. So that's what I kind of view this one as. Yeah. Blade, even you, I can't imagine, has even heard of this. <laughs> you know what? Unlike um, the Sudorus game from like a few entries ago, this one I actually have heard about, funny enough. You have? Okay. Because um, th- th- this is a story I actually didn't really get to talk about, but I actually went to the VGAs um, a month ago. Like, I was actually there in location this year. Oh, sure. And one of the, yeah, and one of the trailers that actually showed up, you know, was for Venba. As a matter of fact, they were kind of showing, like, the, the creator, and they were talking about, like, you know, having their 
culture represented in the game. And I think that's pretty cool. Like, I'm not going to take anything away from, like, you know, happy re representation in video games. Because we're not really privy to other lifestyles in the war. And seeing, like, you know, how, like, an, uh, an Indian family, you know, lives their life and the kind of, like, cuisine that they make. I think that's... That's that's wholesome. I don't think I have like a different word to describe it. Delightful. It's just very charming. And I was like, it looks very nice. And I think as like the feel good kind of game. Yeah, sure. I mean, from the looks of it, it's like, yeah, it's a short game. I haven't played it myself, but from what it looks like, it looks very charming. But, you know, like you said yourself, does it have to be this high? Maybe it hit a chord with the author. Maybe it's something that like, you know, the fa familiar values maybe struck a chord with them, but... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I appreciate the making of it more so, you know, than me actually want to run out now and buy it. Consider the fact I only have a big backlog as is. I respect it, if anything. So that's why you're nicer than us, Blade. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Well, I mean, someone needs to <laughs> offset this. I mean, I mean, obviously, someone being very rude to my boy here. <laughs> Hi. This boy will be a man. And he'll eat your flesh. <laughs> I'm gonna well, go fast. Of, I'm gonna run well, into Speaking of games, I, I know Look you guys. Look at me, I'm Blake Bear. I like video games. <laughs> neither of you bastards played. Uh, number 11 is Mortal Kombat 1, which I did play this year. Um, you know, I will say I enjoyed it. I'm actually shocked it's this high on this list. Uh, wow. I'm not shitting on the game, but like. I think of all the new Mortal Kombat, this is the weakest of them all. Oof. Um, the cameo <laughs> system was fine. It added a little bit of level of complexity. I kind of find it cheap when you do that bullshit tag-in thing. Um, but I get it how it expands it. I just have a big problem with the roster selected. The story was a little... I told Jim this before. Um, I'm so over multiverse shit at this point that I'm like... You're just regurgitating it. But Brian, you and love Marvel. That should be right up your alley. I Speaking love of other things that aged like and I'm done with is the MCU stuff. I mean, geez. as soon as Marvel Endgame was done, it was done. Yeah. Everything after that, you can just flush. Like I watch Quantum Mania. Yeah. No, you don't. Oh God, that existed. Yeah. <laughs> I've watched it. You don't gotta watch it. I did it for you. But yeah, Mortal Kombat One. It, it's still extreme. It's fun. It's this. It's that. It's just the weakest of the Mortal Kombat. So while uh, should it be on the list? Sure. Um, do should it be this high? As the ad, probably the biggest Mortal Kombat fan between the three of us, I don't think it needs to be this high. Ooh. <laughs> I'm saying that because there's there is one on this list that beat this that I completely disagree with. But we'll get to that. So um, you saying that Mortal Kombat won, but we lost? You son of a bitch. I, I can't argue that point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I do want to play it. I'll probably just wait until it has the, uh, you know, the complete edition all with it. all the DLC yeah. again and all that bull crap. I'll get around yeah. to it. I got it. But yeah, it's yeah. not a must play for me right now. Yeah, I, I played it and I enjoyed the combat system pretty well. But there's like another fighting in that we're probably going to discuss later on that like mm. most likely dethroned it. But I will say this from what I have seen of the story, but I haven't watched like the entire story, like like just scenes I've seen of it. I have a feeling I might enjoy it a bit better because I really didn't like the story of Mortal Kombat 11 because, like you said yourself, Brian, it's that regurgita regurgitated multiverse stuff over and over again. And I think one of my favorite stories of the whole like Mortal Kombat, like, you know, reboot saga, whatever you want to call it, the newer games, is probably 10X, and I'll tell you why. It's the only one that doesn't have, like, any, like, time as like a story device like there's no need no one goes back in time there's no like you know time you know manipulation there is no alternate universe is just an actual story with beginning to end without any mention of universes or anything like that and uh and then 11 kind of took me out of the story with like some of the changes they had and i'm really worried about one kind of like continuing that thread but what i've seen at least with the cast they had at least it seems like there's no, like, many celebrities, like... Well, actually, never mind. I forgot Megan Fox. Hey, she, she was She can't fine. be worse than Ronda. Y yeah, Ronda I, I, taking I've a watched. place of a fucking full-form Sonya versus 
Megan Fox being, what was her name? Natara. Natara, oh, yeah. Like, such a throwaway character, I was fine with. Like, yeah. But the, the, I'll give you that. taking over Sonya, I was like, you god damn it. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and we can go into Mortal We could probably talk about Mortal Kombat, the three of us, like, a lot. But, I mean, with X, you had, like, you know, what's her name? Like, Trisha Helfer, I think it was her name. And she's, like... A Hollywood, a Hollywood actress, like, you know, maybe not a big star, but she was, like, you know, in Deep Space Nine, I believe, and, like, she was in Mass Effect as well, so she actually has a career as, like, a big-time actress, and yet they still replaced it with freaking Ronda Rousey for selling more copies. I, said, it, I don't even know. whatever reason they decide it. I mean, there, there's yeah. plenty of choices I've had issues with, to your point, with Mortal Kombat. This one, I just, I didn't hate it, but I'm just kind of like, uh, okay. Like, yeah, it, it came is, and went. It is what it is. Yeah, and yeah, I would love point, to delve into it more. Part part of the excitement with Mortal Kombat games, no fighting game can fuck with the DLC. Like the the licenses they pull for them, that makes it so much more exciting. So once yeah. you get them all, it'll be pretty cool. I, I'll give him that. Like I think it's very cool that for a lot of the characters they do. Um, have for the DLC a lot of the other brands and IPs they actually get the original actors to portray those characters mm-hmm. so when they brought Omni-Man from Invincible there it's actually J.K. Simmons and J.K. Simmons I mean we're talking about like you know one of the best things about the Marvel movies like of all time like you know J. Jonah Jameson just hearing his voice in a Mortal Kombat game that's like you, you don't go wrong money. with him anything yeah. he's in instantly better yeah, yeah exactly for sure Whiplash thank you for smoking Spider-Man everything Beautiful, yeah. sold. I, 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 Whiplash is one of the best movies of all time. Like I adore that movie. How are you just gonna <laughs> casually leave out Lady Killers? You son of a bitch! I never seen that. Honestly, neither have <laughs> I. I have never seen it, so I can. Tom Hanks, comment. J.K. Simmons, what? Okay. And the the guy from uh, Remember the Titans. Come on, how are you gonna hate on that movie? Yeah, I mean that sounds pretty good already from the description. That does sound so, good. Yeah, I definitely gotta see it for the guy from Remember the Titans. <laughs> uh, unless I forget to watch that too. Oh, uh, it's from the, the Cohen brothers. It, you sons of bitches. Oh, is it a Cohen brother? Okay, that sounds better. Oh, okay. That that's that's a good pedigree right there. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Just well, like let's... this podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> All right. So now we're finally dipping our toes into the top ten, and number ten is starting it off with good old Diablo four. And here's the deal. I'm actually shocked it's not higher given the immense push for this game and what I saw is crazy good reception. So I saw nothing but really praise. I knew without doubt I'll be on this list. I just personally expected a little higher. I didn't I didn't play it personally, but I, I never saw negative for it. So I don't know, Jim, what was your take? Since you're more the internet guy and you see shit all the time. Yeah, I mean, people were talking. I mean, this year was basically Baldur's Gate and Diablo 4 from what I saw on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, pardon me, I'm kind of surprised it wasn't higher either. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't played it yet. I haven't played Diablo since 2, so I don't have a lot to add here. But, yeah, I'm sure it's good. Everyone seemed to like it. Gave people what they wanted. This is one of those rare occurrences where I, I'm very adamant about not starting a game without starting the first one. This one might be one I just dive into this one, though, in the series. Yeah, you probably won't be missing too much. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, just shocked it's not a little bit high, higher. But number nine, we talked enough about remakes this time. We knew Resident <laughs> Evil 4 would be on this list. Ah, I'm I'm torn. I really enjoyed Resident Evil 4 remake. I know what it means to the franchise. I don't know if it's not high enough on this list, considering the fucking hype and love that it got. Like this I knew it would, but at the same time I'm kinda like I'm actually shocked it's not top five. It also kind of came and went. Uh, at least from the Twitter perspective, like people are hyped for it. People seem to really enjoy it. I think we're starting to hit that, uh, precipice for burnout for Resident Evil remakes. Like, I think they'll all be successful and I think people will enjoy them and people still want them, but I don't think like the long, like two had like a gigantic impact. Obviously one, obviously one back in 2002 or whatever it was had a gigantic impact. So you had that space out. 
And now they're, not to say they're shitting these out, but, I mean, you had three, which people were, like, up and down on. You had four, which people seemed to really like, but then after a while, they're like, yeah, it's four and it's cool, and then they just kind of moved on. So, I don't know where we're at with it. This is the last big one Resident was going to have for, like, I don't care Code Veronica. I don't care Zero. It has its fans, but it will not be nowhere near as big as two and four was. Don't even give me that face blade. I don't want to hear that but you think zero they're going to be... my favorite. <laughs> don't you dare. Z- but, you know. Zero aged rough. Like on, I, I love like Billy Cohen. <laughs> no, Billy's awesome. I liked Zero a lot when I first played it, and then when we went back to do the review of it, it was like, man, this is really that inventory fucking tedious. System. That's yeah. the number one issue: the the inventory system. Like, yes. If you replace that with a fucking half normal one, game would have been fine. I had mm-hmm. no issue with the story. I had no issue with so much. That could be the but, only change they do to the remake if they ever do it. And I was like, you know what? That's good enough. That's that's it. But no, but so Resident Evil 4. Bring back the so, Robo Baboons. I, I want to say actually very quickly on Zero. You know what they can do to make a good remake out of it? Just make it like the Revelations 2 game. No, fuck Resident Don't you dare. No, I will dare because that it was a decent co op game. It's not that, awful. That was one it's of the worst awful. Resident Evil games. Yeah. Re- it, Revelations uh, Compared two. to stuff like Umbrella Core or like the freaking Resistance multiplayer in well, 3. I don't, it, I, I don't even count those. But I'm yeah, sorry. Like, don't give me awful. I've been too awful. Revelations was an amazing game. <laughs> Res- Revelations 2 was like, what the fuck? What are you doing? Revelations I'm not saying it's amazing. great, but it's not awful is what I'm saying. <laughs> mm. Listen. Let, let, let's it's like in your in your scale, it's like a C or something like that. I would say. Ooh, ooh. I, I, I barely. Are you actually a saying an F? Are you actually? Because no, no, it's not I, an F. I, I will not say F. No, You're it's right. not. Okay. It's not. I, I okay, there. I can F. agree with a D at yeah. least. I'll give you that. Maybe. It just was like of Maybe. when we went through all those games. <laughs> I will literally have itches where I want to go back to every single Resident Evil game. That one. That's fair. I'll give you that. I, I can't want to go back to it. I'll just say that. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, I, I, I liked it way more than, probably more than Brian, but like, I thought Revelations 1 was like an A. And then I'm playing Revelations 2, and I was like, what the fuck happened here? I need to play eight, 1. I actually only played 2. I actually haven't played 1 yet. So really? One okay. One, play 1. Enough. Play 1. One of the best controlling. It's so cool, but I know we're, we're, we're shifting off time. No, I, I was going to go back to 4 even. Yeah, Don't so, worry about it. So, so, so 4, what, what's your guys' take on it? Yeah, um, with, I mean, I think that at the time when this was announced, I think everyone was like, why? Everyone wanted the Code Veronica remake or Zero or something like that. And I thought to myself, because uh, on the Halloween 2022, I streamed Resident Evil 4 again, and I was trying to finish the game for the first time, since I played it all the way back in the day on the GameCube days, and see how well that game aged. And lo and behold, my opinion has not changed. I still think Resident Evil 4... 2005, I mean, the original, is a phenomenal experience. But the controls did age. Like, the fact, obviously, you can you cannot move while aiming, that's a dated mechanic. Like, you cannot, you know, say anything, you know, to change my mind when it comes to that. That being said, what works in Resident Evil 4 is that, yes, you cannot move while you're aiming, but they also designed the enemy AI to not, like, you know, rush and lynch you down, like, why to kill you. They're, like, walking slowly at you, so that kind of made it an effective survivor horror game. So, fast forward like 18 years later with the remake, and yeah, the controls have been modern, but more so, there it just feels like a much more like slick experience. Like, it's paced better, um, the combat encounters are incredibly fun, and that's kind, of, that's kind of like what I like about Resident Evil 4 as a whole. Every area is like a combat playground. Yeah, like, you look at a room or like, you know, an outside area, you look at the ladders, you look at the different like... Um, structures, and you're like, hmm, where should I go next? I'm gonna try to snipe those two Ganados over there, then I'm gonna lure a bunch of, uh, a couple of them here, gonna throw a grenade next to a explosive barrel and blow a bunch. Like, you can get so creative with this game, and the knife parrying, the knife parrying in 4 Remake alone elevates it to, like, a class of its own when it comes to not just survival horror games, but action games as a whole. That mechanic is incredibly fun and satisfying to do, especially when there's, like, a boss fight that was redone in the remake, which I'm pretty sure you know which boss fight I'm referring to. It's a Krauser. Uh, Krau- yeah, and I guess we could say Krauser at this point, because it's a game that's 18 years old. Oh, well, what spoiler are we going to be doing here? Oh, uh, yeah, totally, yeah, I guess that's probably fine. But yeah, just having, instead of like, you know, a quick, by the way, no quick time events in the remake, that's only a big plus right there. 
Do I run uh, away from the rock? I haven't played it yet, so I don't know. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. Well, in general, no quick time. I'm not gonna say if there is a big rock or not, but that's but that's a different story. But yeah, like having the whole knife pairing mechanic, you know, done there, you know, in gameplay and not necessarily like you know you have to press the button in the right moment feels a lot more fulfilling. And as a whole, I just think they made the game not necessarily better, but it's a different experience that holds up as well. I think the only thing that I can think of in the remake that I kind of prefer the original um, set piece wise is one of my favorite things about the original is the minecart segment. Like, you know, when you're in the minecart and, and like you see all those different like Ganados trying to jump in and you have to jump between the carts and like try to shoot them down with all of your different weapons and stuff. I love that part so much. There is a minecart section in for remake, but it kind of like doesn't play the same. It feels like more like a generic um action set piece like an uncharted where you only have like one gun you can use and it feel it did it, it feel more scripted to me compared to like, you know, the chaotic nature of like, you know, random enemies just piling you from everywhere. But if that's like one segment compared to like, you know, the whole like sixteen hour adventure, then that's such a small nitpick. I don't care. It's, it was still a phenomenal experience, and yeah. I'm still proud to say that for Resident Evil 4, whether it's 2005 or 2023, is still one of the best games ever made, in my opinion. Whether it's the best Resident Evil game, that can be a discussion that the sun is going to set down, and we could still have a discussion forever, but as a game, it's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah I agree. That's what I'm saying. I'm fine. You know, on one hand, I could see it being higher. On the other hand, ninth place is fine. Yeah, so, it's yeah, a remake I mean, too, so it's kind of hard to really justify it being number one in a way. But oh no, I would I wouldn't call it number one for yeah. sure. But yeah, I mean, um, moving on, number eight, Sea of Stars. You talk about a game that got all the hype and all the love. It's another one, shocker. Jim and I didn't. <laughs> we're not JRPG fans, but no. you know what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I never saw anything negative. I knew it would be on this list. Yeah. I suppose it's a, a fine place for it. I mean, did you actually get to play it, Blade? Yeah, I did. Um, I was referring to it earlier as well. It's like that Chrono Trigger mm -hmm. experience, essentially. It's like, what if they took Chrono Trigger and basically modernized it? Like, with um, HD, pixel graphics stuff, and um, it, it has a charming story. I, nothing to write home about, but it does have one of the best characters ever in Garl, which is basically... You have, like, two main characters that basically go to their, like, you know, special monk-like training to become, like, super defenders of the universe. And you have, like, their friend that's, like, basically left over. And, like, you know, he doesn't get to join them for, like, their 10-year training. So you think to yourself, oh, so they're gonna meet him again and he's gonna become, like, you know, an evil villain. It's like, you deserted me for 10 years, you're terrible friends. But no, they come back from the training and he's like... Hey, can I just join you on your quest and I can make food for you and just be your BFF forever? And they're like, yeah, sure, let's have an adventure. And it's like, my God, this is like the most awesome, wholesome video game character ever. He's just a nice guy. And it's just rare to see in a video game, like a character that does like genuinely just want to do good for people. Like every time there's like a new town, you have to like ask for help. That Garl character just comes in and it's like, you know, hey, my friends and I, we need to do this one thing. Can you please help us? And they're like, why should we do that? Because I can make you a delicious loaf of bread that's like the size of like a house and they're like heck yeah <laughs> so it's a very charming game very delightful I, I keep using the word delightful a lot I notice in my descriptions um yeah I, I think it deserves like you know um the like the indie of the year title and all that stuff which it's kind of weird because I think 2023 as a whole wasn't like a very popular year for you in indies I think it was more of a triple really. A year yeah then you know some years I think there's like the indie wave is a bit stronger the than the triple I think this year was more indie. yeah yeah I, I, I think there's some more indie stuff that I can think of that was that was talked about that maybe is gonna show up later on not spoilers but yeah Sea Stars if you like old school like you know Super Nintendo RPGs, I highly recommend it. I think it's yeah. definitely worth the time. Well, I yep, mean, you hit point. on it. Lack of Indies, number seven. Marvel Spider-Man 2. And Jim, you and I have talked about it. <clears throat> we were both... I mean, it's stupid to say, but we were wildly impressed with the first Spider-Man. Yeah, like everyone else, we thought it was really good. <laughs> mildly. Yeah. It's aged amazingly. Hot take, um, I know. I know. But... Once again, same as this placement. I don't know if it's 
not high enough considering how much people loved it. We we covered some of the bullshit some people got upset about with this game, but if it's anything like the first one, it seems like they improved on every aspect and added mm-hmm. in his main enemy that everyone cares about, Venom. Mm-hmm. What's not to love? So I don't know what Jim. What what do you think about this placement? Everything I heard from everyone I know who played it was like, yeah, it's like the other ones, but a little bit better. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So yeah. I definitely want to play it at some point. Mm-hmm. Like I'm still a little burnt out after playing the first one last year or two years ago. Whatever. The, oh, Jesus Christ, what is it? Now? <laughs> Probably two years ago. I'm old. Sheesh. Time flies. But uh, yeah, uh, I mean. I if when I go back to it, like I'll probably skip Miles Morales and I'll just jump into this one. See, I got Miles Morales free from something, so I know I'll play it. And I heard it's not incredibly long, but yeah, I can't wait to hop into this one because yeah, I, I, this is one of those go to I know without even playing it, I'm gonna enjoy myself. So they know how to make a good Spider Man game. Um, yeah, it's a feel good game essentially. I, I know, I, I know, it's kind of a weird thing to say about Spider Man, and it's probably the most generic thing you can ever say about any video game, especially a superhero game. But it makes you feel like the superhero, and I know everyone say that, but I, I actually think that that description deserves more credit because there are not many superhero games that make you feel like you're actually playing as a superhero. Like I'm thinking of like um, the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. That's an example of a game that you feel like the Hulk. Like, roaming around a big city and throwing cars. Have you never heard of it before, Jeff? No, that's one of my favorite games. I thought you were yeah. just about to trash it. Like, I No, love no, I love it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite things in the game is just grabbing a car and made, like, you know, metal mittens to, like, you know, pummel dudes Two, around. 2005, it's and it's still one of the best superhero games ever made. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm just saying, like, there are just very few games. I was about to be like, you son of a bitch, don't you fucking <laughs> no. talk about that game. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of that. I'm thinking of, like, you know, the Batman Arkham games that really capture, like, the idea of, like, what it's like to be, you know, yeah. Batman. I'm in a sense, like, you know, oh, I'm going to punch Batman bad guys but i also get to you know, do all the detective stuff like solving you know riddles or uh hanging off stuff and you know catching guys and it's the same and thing the stealth, with spider-man yeah. yep. and the stealth which is also what spider-man does really well does the stealth very well does the swinging incredibly well the combat like all the combos you get to learn are incredibly easy to pull off and you feel the weight of like your punches the gadgets I mean, uh, the gadgets as well <laughs> i'm thinking about like you know the punches and i always remember like with spider-man is like you start a combo mid-air and then you realize you have an enemy that's about to fold out it's like that's another victim spider-man they're dead whoops <laughs> so oopsies uh yeah it's just pretty much like it's insomniac once again that company they just keep cranking bangers after bangers i don't know how they keep doing it especially since they released like so many games recently like, with all the spider-man games and the ratchet and clank rift apart recently too they just keep doing an amazing job I admit I still have yet to complete it, but I would definitely like to um, get to it eventually. Um, I ju- I'm just glad that, um, man, 2023, they gave us so much good stuff. I cannot wait to just delve into some of that and just really enjoy myself. Yeah. Oh, and they added, like, you know, like, new areas, like, with Queens and Brooklyn as well, too. So they added more to, like, the whole, like, New York State, like, you know, mm-hmm. playground to mess around with. I don't know how they do this. And it loads quickly and it looks amazing. How do they do it is... How do they do all of that out of the PS5 hardware? It's just bonkers. Yep. They had to throw in more areas that smelled like piss, much like most of New York. And speaking of well, piss, break <laughs> time for me. I'll be right back. <laughs> God damn it, Jim. Hey, I transitioned this time. <laughs> all right. So, Jim's back from his little PP break. Whew, thanks for announcing that, by the way. Yeah. We really wanted to know. Yeah. That awful transition, which you forced in there. Terribly. I just want people to know when I'm touching my dick. That's all I want. I want you to enjoy it with me. You're welcome. You know, if you didn't tell us and you were just like, you know, making a fib about it, it will be the lies of P. You sons of bitches. Full circle. Full, that's what you get <laughs> wow. on this show. Full circle, people. So number yeah. six, I Next feel up. like I, I know I, uh, Jim, I know you haven't played it, but um, yeah, Street Fighter Six. Yeah. Here's the deal. <laughs> when I saw this game come out, the only thing I saw about it was people making goofy ass fighters in Create a Fighter. Like like no necked, crazy necked, just just abominations of, of caricatures in this fighting game. I didn't see much substance into the game itself and Street Fighter, it's legendary, it's fine. 
but it's also you know what it's a boring technical cousin to mortal Kombat. so i get people and i'm saying it blade i, I get that people like they they forever a hater they they couldn't wait to jizz after five and that flop that it was and they're like oh six is here now you can create a fighter so so blade i can't wait let me hear why it's great but you're never going to convince me it deserves number six. I think they were just being cute with the numbering of six and Street Fighter six. Tell me why it's amazing. Well, I first you're of wrong. All, I think it's... all right, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, now that was the still <laughs> jizz right there. <laughs> uh. See what I deal with every week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For 200... 200- 44 times um, <laughs> and that's not to mention the, the years before the podcast oh my god hey, even take that hey, into account <laughs> you could still be at cvs you son of a bitch that's true <laughs> uh, i'm one of those few people who didn't really hate street fighter 5 so i thought it was like just kind of fine but it was really devoid of content in the sense of like once you like done with a few of the story segments which is like maybe like three battle tops for like each character you're kind of like done with it and yeah you can play online which i did but yeah i was kind of dropping out of it pretty quickly they did eventually add in like a real like campaign True. story mode yeah yeah but that's I don't when wanna... i eventually played it yeah but why do you have to wait like three years for a game to be complete and that's kind of what upset me about it back in the day like i wish we got like at least a sizable chunk of that content on day one as opposed to Oh, the yeah. Championship Edition in 2019 or whatever that yeah, was. It was like the No Man's Sky of fighting games, weirdly enough. Which is weird enough because it came on the same exact year of 2016. Curse. The year that just keeps on giving. I mean, it's like I'm trying to look back on like 2016, like, what were my favorite games of this year? And then just like silent. Pretty much. Doom. Doom. Yeah, do a time to fall too. That was the other one I was thinking. Oh, well. nope, yeah, good good year for shooters. Yeah, that, that was a good year for shooters. But much a lot of other stuff, but I digress. Uh, what really made Street Fighter Six an improvement over Five is um, that much need needed style for it. Like it has like very stylistic menu, which I know is not something that I would convince you to get, Brian. But it made it made the experience itself more memorable of how they presented the story and the characters. Uh, it's probably the most stylistic uh, presentation I can think of since, like, Persona 5. And regardless if you play Persona 5 or not, the way they present the menus... Because you've seen the Persona menus, like, you know, being memed on and all that stuff. Yeah. That's basically... Street Fighter v, uh, 6 did the same thing again. Um, the fighting mechanics, I think, like, there's, there's a new drive mechanic that's very cool. Because, you know, like, how in fighting games, like, under the health bar, there's usually, like, you know, like... um. A stamina bar that if you block too many times, if the bar goes too low, you um, the guard breaks and you become dizzy or something like that. Like, does that ring a bell to any of you? Mm-hmm. This was what I like about the drive mechanics. It's used both offensively and defensively. Defensively, essentially, you can block attacks. Like, say, if someone comes at you, not just with a regular attack, but even like a Hadouken or like any special attack, you can tank it and build up your drive meter. But what you can do with it offensively is they can, you can make all your special attacks much stronger. So, for example, um, let's say uh, you have a Hadouken, like Fireball. If you use it with a Drive ability together, which takes like two segments of that bar I was talking about, uh, your Hadouken becomes a double Hadouken. Hmm, sounds like they copied off the Mortal Kombat remakes, but go on. <laughs> which, funny enough, Mortal Kombat copied that from Street Fighter 4, but I digress. Boom! It, this know, is this is coming from Mortal Kombat fan, by the way. I'm being um, like unbiased here, <laughs> for the record. <laughs> it just controls, and the new cast of character they introduce is very fun. Like at first, I was like, "Why is this Luke character that's like on the front of the box, like the poster boy of Street Fighter Six? Where's Ryu and Ken?" But then you realize, oh, Luke is actually really fun to play as, and I like all those other characters. Like one that's like does the drunken fist uh, fighting style, which is very fun. To play, I mean, there's no drunken fighters in Mortal Kombat. Well, there is one, but we don't want to talk about him anymore. Uh, Bo Raicho, are you kidding me? He's the yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, the, ma- the, 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 the mentor of Liu Kang, my butt. Yeah, I just told him out to, like, yeah. fart. Yay. Um, <laughs> me in a game. <laughs> okay, that, that, okay, now I like Bo Raicho a little bit more just for that yeah. analogy right there. 
Um, the story mode is actually fun. Like, I, being able to create your character and going to various Street Fighter characters and having them mentor you. And you get to make your own, like, Street Fighter, like, move set in a way. You can have a Hadouken. You can have, you know, the spinning bird kick from Chun-Li. You can make your own move set to make your own character. And if you want, in the online mode, you can actually use that same character to fight other um, fan-created, you know, abominations like you mentioned earlier with what, what people are doing online. Um, as a fighting game, it's just addicting, and it's one of those games that it's just fun, crazily enough, to not even play and just spectate and see how pros are able to, like, parry stuff and how they're able to um, pretty much exploit other players' behaviors. It's kind of fascinating. It's kind of like watching a sport. Essentially, like, you know, watching an Eagles game only without having, like, a CDI Don't to play on. Don't you dare. No, here's the deal. At the end of the day, I know it was going to be on this list. I just, I still think, I don't think that or Mortal Kombat should be as high as it is, just in terms of fighting games. But I get it. it I knew it would be on here. It was big yeah, for some folks. I would say this about both of those games. I think it's been a decent year for fighting games, though. Like, we have, like, a good caliber. And we're talking, like, in previous years, like, what was out, like, in other years. Like, King of Fighters 15 or DNF Duel or, like, yeah. Guilty Gear Strive. Like, no one... Like, those games are good, but they didn't really, like, break those lists usually. It's for the hardcores, yeah. Yeah, but I think that this year was a different year where, like, we have Street Fighter actually being a part of the mainstream discussion for a good chunk of time. And even Mortal Kombat did somewhat okay, at least with the terms of sales. So, yeah. I give credit where credit is due. Like, this has been actually a good year for fighting games, and yeah. I don't think other years are actually going to compare. I mean, even with this year with Tekken, and I love Tekken too, but, I mean, with both Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat... And even some other surprise stuff, like the Nickelodeon fighting game was surprisingly also decent. I mean, 2023 has been a really strong year for fighters in general. Yeah. But... forgot I just gave a comment to a Nickelodeon fighting game for crying out loud. I was fine with the Nickelodeon fighting game. It's okay. Uh, I know, I'm just shocked that I am, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but no, I think uh, following that in the most non-shocked game... Well, maybe maybe there'll be a few more, but yeah. Super Mario or Super Mario Bros. Wonder, of course, it was going to make this list. Mm -hmm. I think it's fine where it's at. I'm sure some folks would argue it should go higher, but honestly, they, when when do they ever miss with Super Mario Brothers games? I haven't played I can it. Think of a few. <laughs> I haven't played it. I want to play it. Everyone I talked to who played it loved it. So yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I think the fact that people say, like, the, even the online of this game is good is shocking to me because I don't really like the whole, like, four-player, like, co-op platform craze that, like, the new Super Mario Brothers started all the way back in 2009. You know, you know what I'm talking about, like, you oh, know, because... No, yeah, no, I'm sick of that style, so... Yeah, I, I'm not, and people say, like, oh, the multiplayer in Wonder is actually good, and I'm like, are, are you actually, like... Of good health is your is, are you okay? Like I, it just doesn't make sense to me because even like the same year, like Sonic Superstars tried to do the exact same thing and that like messed up the multiplayer. Because you're playing a Sonic game, you run very fast. How do you expect people to stay in the same screen the whole time? But apparently with Mario it works because I guess you don't go super fast. But I think what like to your question earlier, uh, Brian, when did they ever miss with Mario, the new Super Series? Like if you think about it. Do people even talk about those games as fondly anymore, like New Super Mario Bros. Wii and Wii U and all those? Uh, they talk about the new, the first one, and then the first one on Wii, and then after that, everyone's like, yeah, I got overplayed. So Yeah, and then, like, you know, there was, like, this, like, I think it was a sequel on the 3DS, and that had, like, the gold coins, and who cares about collecting coins in Mario? Like, what do you even do with... You can have a million coins, okay. Yeah. Like, what does that do? So I think that's what Wonder did. It kind of like gave like you know a shot in the arm that the two D Mario games in it because it looks vastly different than any two D Mario game. Like the visual style is out of this world. There's even like actual dialogue in the Mario game, which I wasn't expecting. But like you know the talking flowers that react to things, you think that would actually get annoying, but it's actually kind of you know f genuinely funny and adorable, which. I give respect to that. I mean, yeah, we don't have Charles Martinet, unfortunately, as Mario anymore, but the replacement did a good job as Mario. Couldn't even tell that they changed the voice actor, which, kudos there. It was me. Wow. <laughs> are you Mario? <laughs> uh, I, 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 are you Chris Pratt from, from Guardians of the Jurassic Park? 
Yippee! <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Wahoo, I stomped on Goombas a lot when I was a child. <laughs> um... You know, it's crazy. Like, like you know how I'm saying earlier, you know, how this year was a good year for fighters? This year has been a good year for the Switch, too, with all this stuff that came out. And Mario Wonder was, like, you know, the nice, like, bow to tie everything up. I mean, yeah, I know Mario RPG came afterwards, but I am I would like to just delve more into Mario Wonder. I only played a little bit from what I played. Um, apparently, they say, like, every single, like, world has its own, like, you know, gameplay mechanic. Like, one of my favorite is that... Um, there's one world where if you use the Wonder Flower, which is what gives you the abilities, you get to, like, walk on walls, which is cool, like, the perspective kind of changes. So instead of, like, you know, seeing the character walk like this, the character are now, like, running on walls around, you have to escape from, like, you know, obstacles on the walls, which, how do they come up with this stuff? And, um... They got that touch. Yeah, it's Nintendo, I mean, yeah, when it comes to that, the creativity, when they actually put their, like, you know... Well, like you said, like we all said, I, at this point... It's Nintendo. You know they're, for the most part, they're gonna for the most part. pretty much slam dunks with these. So yeah, it, it's not shocker. And honestly, I feel the same with number four with Final Fantasy sixteen. Now, while there has been some <laughs> ups and downs with Final yeah. Fantasy, here's the deal: I'm not Jim and I. Once again, I'm gonna speak for them. We're not fine Final Fantasy guys. The only thing that intrigued me with this one is that it kind of has that game of thrones influence it's much more action oriented and all the bullshit (laughs) rpg elements are i'll just say plebe down and they're 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 a little more calmed down so i've never seen a final fantasy where that made me go i'm kind of interested this one from what i've seen i could kind of see myself playing i'll just say that yeah from the twitter guy perspective um People talked about it. seemed to be more of a love-hate game, weirdly enough. But, yeah, yeah, like the old school fans hated The new fans liked it a lot. So, yeah, I don't have a lot to add because I've only played, like, two Final Fantasy games. It's one I'm never going to touch. But, yeah, I mean, good for it. I guess people liked it. You know, you were talking about, like, how, like, so many games are, like, too high on this list. This is one of those cases I'm like, maybe this game is a little bit too high because of all the discourse around it. Because... I'm not sure how familiar you are with 16, but it took a big departure in terms of, like, Final Fantasy gameplay. It's uh, it's obviously not a turn-based game anymore. Is it more than, like, what 15 did? Even more far away from what 15 did. Like, 15, you can still, you know, have, like, you know, moments where you can use, like, item mid-combat and, like, heal yourself. Kind of like, you know, um, 7 Remake did. 16 is essentially, like, more of, like, an action game, like Devil May Cry. Because it's actually the combat director of Final Fantasy 16 is the same guy who directed the combat for Devil May Cry 5. Weird. Funny enough. So, to answer, like, when you said, Brian, like, you might play this one, ask yourself, do I like Devil May Cry? And if the answer is yes, you're probably going to like Final Fantasy 16. I'd like it more than a bullshit usual of most Final Fantasy games. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, my only problem with Final Fantasy 16 is. You want Devil I don't... May Cry for 30 hours, though. That's the question. No, it's not. It, let, I'll be honest. None of it's enough to really make me dive in. But if I were to dive in, this is the closest I would. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I mean that's why I'm saying because it's more of an action game than like the turn-based stuff. And I know you're not the turn-based stuff unless it has like you know, um, Eric Cartman in a wizard hat or something like Bucking that. Essentially, right. can't be yeah. perfection. Yeah, but but I'm just saying, you know, my my gripe with it was more the fact that. It, I don't mind it's an action game, but I think I don't like the whole discourse of like you know, um, we didn't want to make Final F- like what Square was saying that they didn't want to make Final Fantasy sixteen a um, turn based game because turn based games are not successful anymore and no one cares about like you know that kind of stuff and I disagree. I think the turn based games are still around like with Persona doing so well, Pokemon, um, yeah, like a the- dragon. Yeah, the biggest game that everyone was talking about this year, which we're probably going to talk about very soon on this list, is a turn-based game. So I disagree with that notion. As a matter of fact, I I just wish that this game probably shouldn't have been like Final Fantasy XVI. It probably should have been like Final Fantasy Clive's Quest or whatever. Like something that doesn't really have like the numerical number because I like them to be consistently, you know, adhere to the same... um, 
gameplay conventions. Or do something like 7 Remake, which, yeah, it's an action game, but you still have an option to play the game as a turn-based one, use spells or switching characters and what have you. So, I think they just veered off a little bit too much with 16. Which is probably the reason why it didn't sell as well as they hoped. Maybe yeah. that's a sign that... And I think that there was an interview recently that um, Yoshi P, the director, said that maybe 17 should be handled by the new generation. So, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Well, we're down to the top three, and here's the deal. This next one, I would honestly call the semi-surprise hit of the year with Alan Wake 2, considering the awards it pulls in, the praise it pulled in. Now, I know Alan Wake was a beloved fr- you know, game. Cold hit. But, Cold hit. But 13 years ago, it's been out f- it's been a long time, and this one came out, and it's the horror game of the year. It's the narrative game of the year. Like there's so over RE4 that, remake, which is yeah, crazy. Exactly. And and here's the deal. Um, it even Jim, I think you mentioned or or Blade, me playing Dead by Daylight. Alan Wake is now going to be in Dead by Daylight. So wow. like, he's pulled yeah. it, like. And, and here's the deal. I haven't played it. This will actually be on my beat five franchise because there are three games in the alan wake series so i can't because there's alan wake alan wake's american nightmare and alan wake 2 yeah, the so DLC, that is nightmare that, just dlc is that just a dlc nope back? It's DLC. nope nope it's it's just it just it's nah, a third person it shooter just be nope it's a follow-up <laughs> spin off their predecessor as i read might it be a little right bullshit <laughs> jim it's real but hey, that, I, that's I his Minecraft turtles. Let have his, let's I, let's have I, in his I Minecraft turtles. I cannot wait to play it. I mean, here's the deal. I like this, turtles. This is one game I actually I want to know very little. I know enough about it. I know it's narrative driven. I know it has it, it it's very much influenced by Silence of the Lamb, True Detective, a thriller, mm-hmm. investigation. I want to know so little about it that I go beyond out of my way to not read Same. about it. So I know it's a hit. I'm sure it's one I'm going to dive into, but are either of you going to dive into it, or have you already? Never played the first, so I'd probably want to play the first before I played this. Okay. Well, that's what I'm going to do, so yeah. It'll be really cool that by this time next year, maybe all of us will actually catch up with Alan Wake and actually get to talk about it, because... I'm say, actually I'm gonna agree with you 100%, Brian. I don't want to read about the story whatsoever. I want to go into the second game, especially the second game in particular, completely blank because apparently people say it's one of the best narratives in video games in recent memory, and that's a high praise because we had some really good stories throughout the years. Um, and and what people mostly say is that it's a culmination of not just the Alan Wake franchise, it's also Everything that Remedy has done, because apparently there's like, you know, mentions of stuff from like Max Payne and Control, and they even use like, you know, some stuff from, um, God, what was that X? Quantum Break as well. If you remember that game oh, that they wow. made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like they really go like to the deep end of the well to like just go all out with this game, which again, I don't know anything in terms of the story stuff. I'm not going to spoil because I don't even know. I don't even want to do this to myself. My only like small gripe with Alan Wake is that I'm glad it's doing well. I'm glad of its success. I just wish there was a physical copy of it that I can buy and own. That's the only thing I'm kind of sad about. Not even like, you know, upset. I'm sad because, you know, they made the remaster of Alan Wake 1. I can own that. And consider the fact that Alan Wake 2 is selling so well. My one request is, please give us a physical version. I think it's such a hit they're going to double dip and they will release a physical. Sure. I so. hope so, too. I would love that. I want to be shocked. So What's next, Bri? Jim, not, speaking about not being shocked, the two and one of all the lists I've It's just Zelda and Baldur's. Is that what it is? I had to close that's, it because it was fucking up my computer. Yeah. I was gonna, well, that's what I was going to say is that it's in everyone's... There is literally nothing to say. The The only thing I will throw out there is with Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, I'm, I actually felt like the Fuck. hype behind it went away much faster than I thought it would. Like, there was that period of, like, everyone sharing the gazillion creations they were doing and this, you know. I absolutely loved the giant <laughs> mechs being made in Tears of the Kingdom. Outside of that, though, yeah. I felt like it just died off after people got tired of creations. Whereas Baldur's Gate, man, that thing came on and it fucking—it was a hurricane of a game. And 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 it in every list, it's one and two with these two. So there's nothing to say about either one where I'm like, 
you, you're not, I don't think anyone was shocked by it, but you know, sometimes it's kind of nice to know that everyone's expectations can be met and that they end up being games of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Zelda, from what I heard, like besides the memeing of the creations, that was the newest gimmick. Besides that, I was like, yeah, it's, you know, Breath of the Wild again, but a little better. Yeah, I, t- I kind of always joked about it. It's like, it's a sequel of Nuts and Bolts that I've always wanted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it's yep. just more engineering in it. Yeah, and Baldur's yeah. Gate, you mentioned it. Um, which was a surprise for, like, everyone for it. Well, not only yeah, how well, which, it was, but, like... Which is which, by the way, number-wise? So, Baldur's I've... Gate is two, and oh, Zelda is one. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's which, actually surprising. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. Obviously, That's the uh, Rolling Stone the normifying of it, I guess. Yeah, like, because we know, obviously, Baldur Gate won Game of the Year, and in many other yeah. lists, it was number one. Mm-hmm. Um, now, here's the deal. I mentioned turn-based, not my style. I know that's what this game is. But it's turn-based tactical, though. It's like XCOM-ish. It, 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 it is. It is. Um, I've never played any of the Baldur Gates, and I'll be honest, even seeing that it's winning these awards and seeing footage of it, doesn't make me personally want to jump into it but like hey you know what i i'm just so happy to hear a new name in contention for the the normal shit we hear every year year and year out and it's not a complete bullshit like let's cook food and it's an indie game and we love it like no fucking sometimes a triple a needs that win and that like <laughs> a more niche genre like got all these accolades too a turn base like like computer console rpg exactly that yeah. you'd never think would win from a company that up until this point made like you know the divinity series which divinity like original sin like those games are like very niche very like focused very loved. like one very demographic loved, though, but very niche. very loved yeah but n- they never like cracked you know the mainstream gaming and i you played know, original sin 2 for an hour got bored and never played it again and maybe it's great. I haven't played it either. So, and again, with all the time, I, I wish I could freeze time and play everything in the world, but not yet. Um, the thing that really, the, like, how you know a game like has uh, penetrated the mainstream is if you know if South Park mentions it, you know it's popular. Oh yeah, it's a good. It's like, you know, man, I want to play Baldur's Gate three. That's my best Cartman. I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Jim is the perfect Carmen. <laughs> I cannot do that. Um, but yeah, it's like the same thing with Alan Wake. I'm, I'm kind of waiting for the physical of that too. And in the case of Baldur's, it's actually really, really cool for like Larian Studios to actually help produce physical copies. So when that's going to be out next year, I'm totally going to get it. I'm, I'm more than willing to delve and see what makes that game as amazing as it is. So yeah, I mean, good, good, good on them, and especially since you know, everyone thought that. Tears of the Kingdom was going to sweep the year after it came out, and everyone's like, well, time to it's hang done. the towels, it's done. And then Baldur's Gate 3 comes out of nowhere and manages to not give, not only give it a fight, but even like a chance to usurp it. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, su- surprise all around, really. I'm shocked, yeah. Like, genuinely shocked. In a good way, though. So. No, what I will say is, in general, we've talked about these lists every year, and there's usually much more I have an issue with. This year... This one in particular, I think, kind of hit it out of the park. Of the six yeah. and seven lists I reviewed, there's only two games, honestly, I'm kind of shocked that could have been swapped in for the bullshit of, like, Thirst, whatever, and Cooking Simulator, <laughs> which is yeah. Forza Motorsport, because I know those Forza games are amazing, but this is me and Jim biased, because, Jim, I am speaking for you again, but give Blasphemous 2 on here, because enough other lists called out how great it is. I still need to play that. Yeah, I, I'm sure I, I have to play one, either, one. <laughs> but but one was great enough where I'm sure two is great. And so you recommend one then? Okay, I'll oh, definitely. No, dude, one is a one must is amazing play by far. Yeah. And, so and, if and, I don't like it, that would be blasphemous. You son of a, a bitch. bitch! Yeah, let's add it to the list. <laughs> yeah. I, All right. So before we sign off, Blade, real quick. Yeah. You want to talk about your beat five? What are the franchises? Well, yeah. You got let me up? just touch on a quick 2023 thing. I'll do a rapid fire round if you don't mind. Yeah. So let's Pikmin Four. Where's Pikmin Four? Boo! I hear people loved it. Everyone I know who played it loved it. Brian, bad. <laughs> I won't. I won't pick them. Go on. Yeah. Um. Fire don't, Emblem. Did you in, motherfucker? Don't you blade blade? Don't you? I can only deal with one. I don't need two. <laughs> he didn't even pick up on it. I know. <laughs> I know you, you son of a bitch. 
Go on, Blade. <laughs> oh, God. I, I just lost my train of thoughts again. <laughs> so mad right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, Dave the Diver is another big indie that I'm surprised not a lot of people talked about. It wasn't in that list. That's a big one that was yeah, also that, mentioned. Yeah, that did a lot. got a lot of talk. Yeah, I mean it's not an indie game technically because it was like actually funded by like you know Nexon, but yeah, I never dived bit. into that one. Another game was Cocoon, <laughs> which was uh, I think it was made by one of the uh, people who worked for Playdead. The people who did Inside and Limbo. That's another one that was pretty big. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, oh, Pikmin! I didn't pick that one. Uh, oh, God. Yeah, yeah not, nothing emerged from Cocoon, so go on. Okay, okay. Uh, God, uh, do I even want to keep going with this rapid fire? Because I just <laughs> keep, like, a event. Like, I just, just want to keep... I don't, and Jim didn't even hear that last one, so go no, on. No, I threw, I threw my earphones <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, let's put it this way. There's just a lot of stuff that came out in 2023. I don't think this podcast would ever going to do justice. Just... Thank you for video games. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> gonna hey, you it. know what? We can all say it was a good year for gaming. It Which was. Award. And, oh, and sure. you know, and I hate it when they say, like, you know, every, every single, like, award season or, like, you know, be, like, best of the year. This year was such a good year for gaming. And I thought the last few years weren't that it's good. Sucked. Yeah. Yeah. We had fucking games about stray cats. Like, what are we talking about here? Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. I was listening to the podcast back. And ever since then, I played straight. And it's like, meh. It's 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 fine. I just I don't get it why it's a game of the year material. That's all. Exactly. Um, but yeah, but uh, yeah, I think Pikmin Four is just the main omission from that list because I think it is a very fun and good like iteration of that Pikmin concept that we had to wait ten years for. But oh well, can win them all. At least we have that cooking game that Brian loves. So there's that. Don't you dare. Tenba, uh, with big Tenba ease. guy, or whatever it's called, yeah. whatever the fuck. Venba, Tenba, Vimba, Vimber? Venba, yeah. Ventemba? Yeah. As for the Beat 5, this is what I'm thinking of doing for Go this on. year. So, I thought to myself to try to diversify the franchise that I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna mention some of my alternate stuff as well, too. I'm just gonna go through them very quickly. Because I only beat two games in that franchise recently, that's Ninja Gaiden. I never really properly played all Ninja Gaiden games, and I thought to myself, I'm going to play all the 2D ones, like the NES stuff, and I even played the Master System version of the original too, oh, wow. but also it will be nice to finally play the 3D hack and slash games and finally, finally finish them too. Which I hear are also very hard, so yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know me, I like things hard. Uh, next up, um, and th this is, um, I thought to myself, the Turbo Graphics, the PC Engine, or whatever you want to call it, is a system that I really didn't really delve much on, and I'm thinking to myself, what is a franchise that started on that system? You're, and is You're like, gonna bonk? I'm gonna bonk. Oh, he's bonking. I'm gonna bonk. I'm gonna tackle the bonk games, and also try to do, I believe there's like the Super Nintendo um, uh, sequel. I Maybe there's a Game Boy game, but that I'm there not There is a Game Boy game. Sure. I played that. Is a Game Boy ago. game? Okay. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, it is, actually. It's fun. Okay. And you can beat in like 40 minutes to an hour. It's not long. Okay. That, that's good to hear. Um, let's go with something a bit more modern. Because I, I, I noticed I do like a lot of retro stuff. Well, modern and more like 6th gen stuff. Like PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox. Um, I like shooting games. But I, there's franchises I only played the multiplayer off. But not the single player stuff. And I want to do that. Time Splitters. Nice. All right. I never played the story mode of the Time Splitters games properly. Just a second game. Neither but I, I never finished it. I want to go through the original on PS2 and then the other two later on and finally see what's the hubbub of, like, you know, the spiritual sequel series to GoldenEye, essentially, or Perfect Dark. Um, okay. So where are we at? Um, another, another franchise I was thinking of doing... Um, I was thinking to myself, I may want to try some, like, RPGs, and there's one franchise that I haven't tried, and that's Fantasy Star, because I like oh, Sega. okay. And I thought to myself, why not try the Fantasy Star series? And, like, you guys mentioned earlier, like, do I have to do all the spin-offs and stuff like that? No. I'm, I don't have the time in the world. I'll just do the main four. Mm-hmm. And I think More that would be enough, enough of a... That's fine. And even if you just did, like, online... If you did, like, online one and two in universe, that would be fine, too. So you could either... <laughs> you could pick your poison, too, there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I want to pick my poison, I'll put the Japanese version of three, where both the ground and the sky move simultaneously during a battle, and I will have a puking bucket right next Enjoy to me. That's I really true. want that. Fun. Yeah! Yeah! 
And the fifth, which I think is probably the most important one for someone in particular, Star Fox. And I'll tell you why I did Star Fox is because... Well, Brian, I played your favorite game, Resident Evil Remake, already, and it's a great game. Mm -hmm. So I hope that gives you some kind of, like, smugness for the next few seconds. Okay. But I never played Jim's favorite games. Because he needs more. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, I mean... (laughs) <laughs> but you know what? I never actually got around to play Jim's favorite game of all time, Star Fox 64. And I thought to myself, why not just tackle the entire library of the Star Fox franchise? I only played Adventures, which is kind of memed on at this point, let's be real. Yeah. I never played the actual, like, flying Star Fox game, so it'll be nice to play them. And um, and there's not that many either for you, so... And oh, finally, and Chris oh. and this. Oh! Oh! You don't have this? <laughs> this is your favorite Damn game it, of all time, and you actually don't own it completely. Wow. I do. So why are you like, like Because mad? I like looking at it. I just like okay. to look. Blake, I mean, can I'm you in, send I'm, me that, and I can just have a better copy than Jim has? <laughs> I'm in the cuck chair right now, just by looking at it. I can Damn go it. get mine, but... Yeah, um, and then uh, that means I'll also have to deal with like Star Fox uh, Zero on the Wii U, which that's gonna be. Fun. I I still have to play that eventually. Like, yeah, I, I want to see if it's as bad as they say. <laughs> so those are my Our five. Our buddy Bird but... he's kind of a defender of it, so might have something I'll, redeeming. But... I'll give it a chance. Sure, it's not like I'm gonna go into like negative mindset. I mean, I platinum went to games. Frick... People like platinum games. <laughs> I mean, I went to TM and TNES with an open mind, and look what that. Did <laughs> so well, we're screwed. Oof. The other French I was thinking of is because, oh, and another game. Speaking of the best games of the year, like Pizza Tower is a big one that wasn't a part of the 20. Yeah, that, we that just was a huge about. indie game. Yeah, so I thought to myself, I want to play Pizza Tower, but another franchise, if I decide to switch them around, if I cannot play them all, um, the Wireland games, I would like to play those games as well. I don't four like games. Those games. You don't like them. I've played. I've played a good chunk of two and four, and I got extremely bored by both. Okay, mm. interesting. So I mean, I, I mean, good luck. I mean, yeah, I mean, I was, I'm I curious. Did. Maybe, yeah, yeah I, I'm curious to see how it is because it's not like the original Mario like Game Boy games. So that'll be fascinating. And last one, I was thinking of that I haven't touched either, and I maybe to try no more heroes. I do. I do want to get around to that one day. Yeah. So I have like seven, and I, I only need to do five, so I'll just pick and choose and decide from those seven which one I'm doing, but I always start with Ninja Gaiden, and all the started with Star Fox, so I'm going to chip at it slowly and decide nice. then. Hey, the year is young. Yeah, that's yeah. a solid, that's a solid ass list, and like we said, just have fun with it. Like, you know, like that, the whole point is also, if you're playing a franchise you haven't played before, or even one you have, see if it still holds up, see what your feelings are by the end. Yeah, and, not, and don't overwhelm yourself. Like, don't try to do something like Yakuza or anything no. like crazy like that. That's why all of the stuff I've chosen there is like it's like three or four games, so it's like something that's like sizable. There's like it's meat doable. to it, but it's not overwhelmingly like lengthy. And that's why we said like if you play like five Final Fantasy games, we'd be like, okay, you did enough. Like that's a yeah, I think so good. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go with something overwhelmingly lengthy unless it's me. <laughs> Boom! Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Blade, as always, we so appreciate you coming on, giving us the information, even if you're wrong on Street Fighter Six um, And Sonic and- Adventure 2. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm right about Sonic Adventure 2, at least. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, thank you again. Please, guys, make sure, if you haven't already, click the links below. Support Blade on Twitch, on YouTube, on Twitter. Make sure you're giving them follows, giving them some love. And for everyone who has been watching us, if you haven't hit the notification bell, please do hit the subscribe. If you're listening to us on iTunes or Spotify, you hit subscribe, give us a five-star rating. Even if you want to tell Jim how he's a fluffy puff marshmallow man, we will read it on each and every one of these Power Hour podcasts. (laughs) And with that, we want to say have a good night, everyone, and cheers. Thanks for having me again. (laughs) Cheers, everybody. Go follow Take care. Bye-bye.